How many of you going all the way in tonight? I'm gonna let you open your mics and shout it out if you are going all the way in. You're not going ankle deep, waist deep, but you're going all the way in. Come on. Hallelujah. All the way in. Going all the way in. 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 Not just ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in. Come on, everybody. Not just ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in. All the way in. All the way in. All the way in. Ankle deep, waist deep, all the way in. All the way in. That's right. All the way in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the way in. So good to see y'all's beautiful faces tonight and to feel that you are alive. And it's good to see uh, quite a few of you have your uh, cams open. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That means a whole lot. As I am and uh, speaking to you guys. Well, I guess I will mute that now. So I see that there are live people out there, Mary and Jarvis in the house out there, and Blair's in the house, Dr. Angela in the house, and Toya, Rose, and uh, St. Anne's in the house, uh, Maya's in the house, and Winifred up there is in the house, Pastor Allen's in the house, David, Leslie, Rabbi Linda's in the house, Rabbi Linda's in the house, but she ain't in this house. She was for about four months. <laughs> we had a roommate. We had a roommate for about four months. Rabbi Linda, it was so much fun. Then she's just shifted back, but praise God, hallelujah. We miss you, we miss you, okay. And uh, praise God, we just uh, bless all of you all with the blessings of El Elyon out there. And we thank you for coming to this sacred space of this holy place here. I, I suppose you guys can hear me clearly out there. Yes, yes, great, excellent. And we just want to welcome you. This is Rising Mystics Master Class. This is December the 19th, 2022. This year is getting on out of here. It is getting on out of here. Okay. It is going fast. And so we thank God to just be uh, here and thank God for all of you all that are here, that you all that are yet coming in. We bless you with the blessings of L. L. Young, God the Most High, God the Possessor of Heaven and Earth. Always good to see uh, Sister Patricia. She's out there dancing and worshiping and praising God like it ain't nobody's business, you know, <laughs> giving the devil a black eye, if you will, looking good in that golden black there. She's trying to match me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It's good to see all of you. Leslie is always out there dancing to and worshiping. There she is up in British Columbia. Amen. She don't mind letting her hair down and just worshiping and praising the most high God. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. It's good to see all of you all here. Praise God. Yeah, I see Litz in the house. Litz in the house. He just came, just popped in. There he is. There he is. Litz in the house. He's lit up. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. Let me just get another little drink here. I might have to get Jermel to come down and give me some water. Some water. Um, as they said in Scotland, water, water. <laughs> and so... Uh, Wow. Okay, so and uh, Pastor Noel is here from Philippines. He's in the house tonight. Got the internet back connected or working, uh, getting signals or something out there in the Philippines. And so he's here, Noel Rangian. Water, thank you. And so, yes, yes, yes. So thank God for people all over. Mystic David, Rich Mystic in Nigeria is in the house. Others are yet coming in across Canada, Rose, Winnipeg, Blair up in Saskatchewan. and. Yeah, so it is just wonderful just to be here. David down in, there's David. Let me pull David out here a minute. There's David. There's David out in California, in Florida. He's always here, always here. And uh, as thank you, thank you so much. As is um, High Priestess and many of you. And so we just appreciate that and thank God. I got a word for you tonight. I got a word for you tonight. And um, just gonna... Um, has anybody got a burning, fiery, hot testimony of something that the Most High has done for you recently? If you do, you can raise your hand. We'll get to it. I mean, like right to the point, right to the point. 
It's got to be something that 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 the Lord has has really done or spoken or brought to pass or something like that just recently. Uh, you know, if you do, you can raise your hand and I will quickly get to you. And uh, if not, it is OK. It is OK. It's OK. I'm just trying to just, you know, waste a little time here, not waste time. But, you know, as others I know that are coming in, that are getting off of work and getting up on the other side of the world, you know, <laughs> Three, four o'clock in the morning over there in various parts of uh, of Africa where people are coming in. And Sarah is usually here from India and others. And so um, we just appreciate all of you that come here, whether you are local, whether you are throughout the U.S., Canada, wherever you are in the world, we appreciate you. And those of you that can't be here or not here uh, live that are here in the recording, we just honor you and appreciate you also. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to just start to get to the iPhone. Alice is in the house tonight. Oh, my God. Well, you know, God God is working. God is doing some, <laughs> some wonderful things. Well, before we just get into this, you know, this is the uh, Hanukkah started last night, I believe, at sunset. And so here we are in the second. Uh, hold that up again. And I'm going to just pin that so those that are watching the video later can see it. Uh, she's got her Hanukkah candles out. And maybe you can, I'm going to open your mic so you can say something so your your camera can come unmuted and so that um, people can hear you and so they can see. And uh, can you give us maybe just like a two, three minute kind of like synopsis of Hanukkah or something like that, if you will, um, Rabbi? Well, it's a it's a celebration of a miracle that when the Greeks were trying to overtake the temple, they really desecrated it. it was hideous and so the maccabees um there's actually a whole book on maccabees too mm -hmm. and there's amazing stories about that family and how righteous they were but it's a miracle of oil that oil lasted it was just a teeny little bit of oil and of course the you know we, they didn't have wax candles back then oil is what used and they used just a little wick but the oil lasted for eight days and they only had enough for like maybe one or two days. So it's like a festival of the anointing of God that it never ends and it will always be there when you need it. Um, and it's, you know, they celebrated it. I don't know if they realize, but it's on that darkest night of the year when the sun starts, you know, turns and becomes the you know, the new solstice anyway, but it all kind of coincides, you know, I'm sure all of the mystics, the more you learn about God's word and all the connections, you know, everything connects to everything, but it's a beautiful celebration. Um, I've learned to, you know, follow messianic um, things. I don't do Christmas anymore, but for eight days, we celebrate light and love and we just share with each other. Tonight is the second night. There's eight days. This is called the helper candle. It's called the shamash, which is a servant. Yes. A picture, so many pictures of Yeshua and how much he loves us. He's the servant. He lights the candles each night. Tonight is the second night of Hanukkah. Um, we started Sunday night at sunset. So is that enough or you want That's me to good. keep going? Thank you so it's much. It's beautiful. It's also in, you know, in, in John. Yeshua actually celebrated the uh, festival or this, festival. not really one of this mandated festivals, but it was, he was there on Solomon's porch on the day of light. So there's just so many beautiful connections, but I love it and just love celebrating it. It's really, really cool. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Linda. That is so amazing. It is. And you might say, well, why was that such a miracle? Why was it such a miracle that, that the oil lasted for like eight days and stuff and it wasn't supposed to last that long? Why was it such a miracle that that happened? It was a miracle because he got it told him in Exodus, don't let the fire go out. Don't let the candles go out in the temple, you know? And so it had been there, you know, for all of those years uh, burning 
And so God allowed that oil to just be multiplied to extend, you know, until they could come back with some more. Isn't that just like your God, you know, <laughs> he's more than enough and he will provide for you. And that was one of the miracles, the festival of light It's the festival of illumination. And he is the true life. He's the Shamash. He is that, that, that candle that she says is a heifer that support that lights every man that comes into the world. He is that Shamash. It comes to light up your life and he's come tonight to light up your life. He's come to light you up, to light you up. Praise God. You might feel that your candle spiritually is going out. You may feel like you're dying spiritually or God, where are you? Or what's going on? You know, uh, why didn't these things happen? And uh, this or this, why did this happen or whatever? So he comes to light you up. He's come to just uh, set the fire blaze within you and I. And we thank him for that because he said, I want you to be cold or hot. If you're lukewarm, I'm going to puke you out of my mouth. I'm going to spit you up. And so we have to really, really just you know, be there in that space. Now, I want to speak to you a word tonight. I want to prophesy to you. Can I prophesy tonight through the word of the Lord God? And I want to give you a word tonight. And this word is for tonight, but it's also for the next year. It is also for the next year. And I've, I've, I've preached from this uh, message, from this passage, many times before uh, in the past, and especially during the days when I was traveling a lot, it was a very powerful evangelistic message that I would use in the crusades, camp meetings in various places where I went, preach it and get people all stirred up. But I also use this as a motivational message and stuff to motivate people to, uh, to good works and to change their financial situations and things of that sort. And so it, it is a very powerful scripture because the scripture is multi-layered. And uh, I guess we can call this message, why sit here till we die? Why sit here till we die? That's what we'll call it uh, that. And I'm gonna just uh, read uh, to you some scripture here, and I'm going to read quite a bit so that you can get a good background of this, and uh, uh, because I believe it's going to be really good for you. And so that is a rhetorical question I'm asking you. Why sit wherever you are until you die? You know, uh, whether it is spiritual death or whether it is physical, emotional, relationship, financial, or whatever death, why sit there until you die? OK, now uh, in Second Kings, chapter six, the word of the Lord says this. And just to give you a little background here before we get into this, I'm just going to set this up for you. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how we're going to go with this because there's quite a few scripture. I want to read it so that you can really, really grasp uh, just the, uh, the, the weightiness of this word tonight. But uh, Second Kings, chapter six, verse 24, it says this. And it came to pass. How many know this stuff comes to pass? <laughs> you might be going through something now, but I'm telling you that it came to pass. It came to pass. It did not come to stay unless you want to hang on to it and hold on to it. If it's something that you don't want, it came to pass. That is the purpose for it. It came to pass. After this, that Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, your Bible may say another name, uh, the Argians or something like that, uh, gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. Now, these were a tribe of warrior people that lived in Syria. And notice that they went and they besieged Samaria. That was the northern kingdom of the nation of Israel. As you would, if you're acquainted with the Bible, the kingdom had been split in two. The southern kingdom, uh, the capital was in Jerusalem, and that was the kingdom of Judah. This is where the word Jew kind of comes from, Judah, Judah or Judaism and stuff. And then in the northern kingdom, were 10 tribes, they were called the house of Israel, and Samaria was the capital of that. And so now we see that this king of Syria has besieged Samaria. Verse 25 says, and there was a great famine in Samaria. Notice this in Samaria. It didn't say in all Israel, but the famine is in Samaria. <laughs> all right. And behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver and a fourth part of a cab 
of doves dung for five pieces of silver. Somebody said, that's bad. That's really bad. I'm going to let you open up your mics here for a moment. And just, I want you to say, that's that, that's bad. That That is bad. That is bad. That's bad. That's crazy. That's bad. 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 That's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. That's really bad. And so these people uh, that have been prosperous, people of the most high God, and now here they were scooping up uh, uh, bird poop off their vehicles. You know how when you park and all of this stuff just get there, they were scooping up that to eat and to sell. That's how bad the famine was in Samaria, in Samaria. You know, and uh, ass's head, just the, the head of a donkey, that the donkey was so skinny and everything, just the head was being sold. And that wasn't the worst of it. The people had turned to cannibalism just to survive. You might say, I don't believe that. Read a little bit further. I'm not going to go through all of that because we're getting to some other things. You find that there are these two women. They both had, had a child. There was no food there. And they came into an agreement that, Hey, today we will eat your child. We're going to cook your child and eat him. And so tomorrow we'll have, uh, 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 no, to, yeah, and to my child. And they came into the agreement and they ate that and they ate the child. And then on the second day, the other lady hid her baby. And so, and she went crying to the king, says, help me, help me, because, you know, of what has happened. And he was so moved by that he tore his robe, had sackcloth under it. And he says, if God don't help you, how can I help you? If God, he says, this is out of my control. How many ever been in situations like that when it's out of your control? Totally out of your control. And this is the situation that was there. Let me just read you a little bit more. Now we're going to skip over to chapter seven. And then I'm going to read a little bit <clears throat> here. It says, then Elisha said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered and said to the man of God, look, if Yahweh would open up the windows of heavens, would this thing even happen? And he said, look, you shall see it but you won't partake of it. My God. <laughs> now, I want to just tell you here, uh, before we just get further into this message, is that everyone here on this platform, and those of you that are listening, you have gone through stuff. You have gone through major stuff in your life. You've gone through major things in your life that no one knows about but you. Some things that you could not share with no one else, but you told it to Jesus, you know, as they saw, as the song says, have a little talk with Jesus, you know, and tell him all about your troubles. You know, he will hear and answer your prayer. And so, so there are things that you have gone through that no one knows about, and especially in these last three years. You have gone through COVID almost for three years. And guess what? You're still here. You're still here. You're still here. You've gone through COVID. You've gone through the Omicron. You've gone through, uh, some of you had COVID. Some of you even uh, had, the, had the shot and still got it. Some of you had the booster and some of you had it a couple of times and stuff. And they thought that you were out of here. You even thought that you were gone, but you made it and you are still here. And here we are at the end of December of 2022 and you made it and you're still here. Some of you, you went through the lockdowns and stuff and you felt like you were going to go out of your mind. What am I going to do? Your kids is running everywhere, grandkids and stuff. You can't go shopping. You can't go do this. You can't do that. And they got you locked down in the house. They're making you spend time with your husband and wife that you don't even want to spend time with or that live in person that you don't even want to be around and stuff, you know? And I mean, that is torture. Somebody need to shout torture. Let me just open up your mic here because somebody here know what I'm talking about. 
Somebody shout torture. Oh, that is torture. 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 You know that you've been locked up with somebody that you didn't oh, want to just really just be locked up, you know, with at that time for that much, you know, for not that long of a period and stuff, you know. And it was like torture going through those things. You went through all the restrictions where you couldn't go here, you couldn't go there. You had to wear a mask. Uh, some of you here, you lost loved ones doing the thing. Practically everyone here, I, I can almost uh, 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 that, that know someone that passed away. Know someone that passed away during these last two and a half to three years during COVID and stuff. I remember, you know, uh, Pastor Allen and I, we talked frequently. And I mean, I was just like, you know, and he, I, I said, what you doing, man of God? He's, well, I'm getting ready to go do a funeral. Um, and next month I'm calling him, well, I'm getting ready to go do a funeral. I'm, well, I'm, in, I'm going, God, you know, and many of these, some of these people were his relatives relatives. And so some of you have lost many people, maybe where, maybe they weren't as close, uh, Rose, but they were, you know, people that you knew and stuff you've lost and you've gone through that. But some of you lost people that were close to you. You lost people that was close to you and they're gone here today and gone tomorrow. Some of you lost money. You lost your job. Didn't know how you were going to make it. Didn't know how you were going to get through you know, didn't know what was going to happen, you know, how the food was going to come in, how the bills was going to get paid, you know, and the money was gone. It was gone. It was just gone. You can't work. You can't go out. You can't do this. You can't do it. Some of you maybe had lost your career. Maybe you lost your business or something went down and that, but some of you lost your health and things just start to mess up in your body. And, and no matter how you try to change it, Things were seemingly getting worse and worse and worse. Some of you lost close friends. They're still alive, but they won't talk to you anymore. They don't want to be around you. They treat you funny, you know, and so you don't even know what the problem is, you know, and they won't even tell you. They act like nothing is wrong and stuff. And so you've lost relationships. Some of you maybe have gone through a, a marriage thing or some uh, close uh, uh, romantic relationship that fell apart over the last, say, uh, two to three years. And so you've experienced uh, these things here. Some of you were in depression and didn't even really know it. And maybe you didn't even tell anybody, but you were going through depression. But look at you, look at you, look at yourself. I need you to just like, maybe look at your hands a little bit. Look at your, if you got a mirror, look at, look at, look, just look at yourself for a moment. Look at yourself, look at yourself. You know, use the, the use your phone or something. Just look at the reflection. Just, just look at yourself for a minute. Look at yourself, look at you, look at you, look at you, look at you. Look what God has done. Look what God has done. Some of you have been given negative reports by doctors and stuff. But look at you. Look at you. You're still here. You're still here. Now, they had gone through all of this. There was a sage around the city of Samaria, the capital of Israel. There was a sage uh, around it. What does that mean? That means that this invading army, the, uh, the, the Syrians, they came and they surrounded it. And they surrounded it to such a length of time that it caused a famine. What do you mean? Back in those days, I mean, they didn't have like uh, computers where they could just push a button and drop a bomb on you and, you know, and destroy you and stuff. But it was like, you know, hand to hand combat war and all of that it was very hard. It was very evil. It was very gross and all of that. And so in order to to overcome you, the, the opposing army would come and surround your city, cut off your water supply. Anybody ever had their water cut off? Okay, you don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to. Cut off your electricity, you know. They, they would shut stuff down, you know, and stuff. You couldn't even go out to get food. You couldn't even go. That's why they were in this situation where it was so bad that the people were eating their children because they had been besaged by these this invading force that had cut them off. They could not go get to the grocery. There was no Target, no Walmart. They couldn't go to Winkles. They couldn't go to Safeway. They couldn't do anything. And they had run out of food, all their crops, everything. It could have been months. It could have been years that that armor was just there sitting on them, waiting for them to weaken and die. Because, see, they had this big wall 
all around the city. And so, but they, they knew, they knew if I just sit here long enough, if I just sit on them long enough, if I cut off their supplies long enough, if I can keep them depressed long enough, if I can cut off the resources, the finances and everything long enough, if I can cause checks to get hung up in the mail and get twisted all over here and all over there long enough, you know, if I can cause a, a, enough problems in, your, in the home or with family members long enough, I have them. But I got a word from the Lord for you today. And I want to prophesy to you today that your famine is ending. Hallelujah. Your famine is ending. Whatever has besieged you, whatever that surrounded you and been choking you, says the Lord God, that chokehold, that stranglehold is being broken in the name of Jesus. That chokehold, that stranglehold is being broken. Kasha, hota masaya. It's being broken. It's being broken. It's being broken. Glory to God. Whatever it is that's been sitting on you, sitting on you mentally, sitting on your emotions, whatever it is that's been oppressing you, that force, invisible sometimes, you can't even see it. You don't even know what's going on. You're in meetings and stuff and you try to enter, but you can't. It's broken. Broken, says the Lord, it's broken. And the prophet Elisha prophesied. And he, so he says, tomorrow about this time, things are changing. Things are changing. And I want to prophesy to you tonight. I hope I'm not getting too loud out there. People call somebody on me. I want to prophesy to you tonight that things are changing. Things are changing for you. Things are changing in your health. Things are changing in your family. Things are changing in your finances. Things are changing in your mind. Things are changing for you. The stranglehold is being broken, says the Lord God. The famine and that which would deprive you of that which is rightfully yours is being broken, says the Lord God. Hallelujah. Get ready for something extraordinary to happen. Begin to expect the unexpected because God is going to begin to surprise you. The favor of God and the favor of man is upon your life and it's going to bring you into a new place that you have not experienced before. That you have not experienced before. I want to tell you that whew, 2023 is going to be awesome. <laughs> but we don't, we're not waiting for 2023. It's happening right now. It's happening right now because every weapon that's been formed against you and every tongue that's been rising up against you to condemn you, you have power and you're pulling down. And those words, says the Lord God, that's been spoken against some of you of accusation and lies, they will fall to the ground and break like glass. They will fall, they will have no power. They will have no power somebody that is in a work situation that's been going through some things and stuff and uh, maybe getting right up to something that's going on and people are saying god says it's changing it's changing the words will have no power over you glory to god the famine is ending the famine is ending the famine is ending hallelujah your, whatever the famine is, whatever was causing you lack, whatever was causing you uh, to, uh, to, to not be able to move forward, whatever was causing stagnation in your business, in your career, your education, or wherever it is at, that thing is being moving now. It's being moving. And the prophet said it. He says that tomorrow about this time, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You're going to see it. There is a shift that is taking place in the atmosphere. I, we prophesied it to you last week, and we told you uh, uh, astrologically what is happening, you know, with this uh, winter solstice. Matter of fact, even tomorrow, that's when it comes at zero degrees. That's when Jupiter goes zero degrees of Aries. And so everything is changing. 
in the heavens for you and the will of God that is being done in the heavens is going to be done in your earth. It's going to be done in your material realm, in the material world. Everything is changing. There's a new energy that's coming in. There's a new anointing that's coming in. There's a new power that's coming in. There's a new glory that's coming in. There's favor that is coming in that you have not seen before, says the Lord God. So position yourself and expect it despite what may appear on the outside. Don't expect Expect what you have uh, have had as usual, but the unusual is about to take place for you, says the Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, Shele. Glory to God. Mm, glory. Let me just read a little bit more here. Second Kings. Ha, yeah, yeah. I need somebody to just, I'm going to open up your mic. So I need somebody to shout out. I agree with that. I agree with that. I agree with that. Hallelujah. I agree with that. 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 Hallelujah. 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 I agree with that. 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 That ministry is about to take off. Ministry is about to take off. Now look at this, 2 Kings chapter 7. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, if the Lord, you know, would open the windows of heaven, you know, that can't happen. Somebody say, yes, it can. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. And yes, it will. Yes, it will. If you can believe it, if you can believe it. Now, verse 3, here it goes. Here we go. And verse 3 says, and there were four leprous men uh, at the entrance of the gate, and they said one to another, why sit we here till we die? <laughs> Woo! Why sit we here till we die? Why sit we here in this situation until we die? If we say we will go into the city, then the famine is in the city. If we should die, then we should die there. If we sit here, we're going to die here. Now, therefore, come on and let us fall upon the host of the Syrians. And if they save us alive, we'll live. But if they kill us, we're going to die anyway. But let's not just sit here and do nothing. And they rose, <coughs> they rose up at twilight. I need somebody to shout twilight. <laughs> I need somebody to shout twilight. It was getting dark. It was getting dark out there. You look at the world situation, you hear the, 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 the news or you read the news. I mostly read the news online and stuff. And it's getting dark. It is twilight. It is twilight. You got crazy people in office. You got crazy people running for office. You got just all kinds of messed up people that are leading the nations of this world, you got the, you know, all, all kinds of crazy things going on, people, heads of corporation and stuff. You know, it's just, I mean, the only word I can think of is crazy. It's just like, what? It's just crazy. So you get all of this stuff going on out there in that system. You got the financial system, you got the you got the the crypto space with this guy, you know. Bankman fried, you know, and so yeah, he's fried. All right. And so, you know, and what happened with that that's going on and you got all, you got the wars happening and you got, it's just crazy out there. It is crazy. It is twilight. It is twilight. People can barely see their way. They don't know their left hand from their right. They don't know where they're going, but thank God that there will be people that will question within themselves and says, why are we going to be a part of that system? How many know that you do not have to be a part of that system? You are in the world, but not of this world. You are in the world, but not of this world. And these lepers said, why sit we here till we die? One of the key words last week that the Holy Ghost was speaking, and he is yet speaking, is momentum. With the movements of the heaven, there is momentum that is taking place. You got to get moving. Get your mind moving. Get your head together. Get your feet moving. Get your body moving. Momentum. Begin to move forward and stuff. He says, why is sit we here till we die why sit in that stuff why sit in that you know god will begin to bless you when you move away from dead things mm. god will bless you when you move away from dead things see the be carnally minded is death 
To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. You got to get your mind out of the dead things, out of the things that's not producing. Number one, God will move in your life in a greater way if you can get yourself away from negative people. Selah, Selah, Selah. Now, I know that some of you live with negative people, so you can't just like get out of the house and go somewhere else and stuff. And so they're right beside you. Some of you sleep in the bed with them. Some of you got them running all over the place and stuff, you know, coming out on your door all times of the morning and stuff, you know, cuckoo like type people and stuff. But, you know, you can they can be there, but not there. You don't have to be affected by negative people. You don't have to be, a, you got to rise up out of that negativity and be the light, be the example, rise above that. Why sit down with this negative garbage with people complaining and uh, about everything that happened and stuff and nothing good ain't happening. And every time you do something, they, they can't praise you, that they can't, they're constantly complaining. Well, why didn't you do it this way? Why didn't you do it that way? Shut the blank up, you know? And so you have to, to get rid of that negative attitude. You have to break it within yourself and stuff. And sometimes you have to sit up in your house and you have to take a stand and say, devil, back down. <laughs> back down, you know, back down. So you got to, you can't sit in negativity because negativity will breed more negativity. It will infect you. It is worse than Omicron, I promise you. It will infect you and it will cause all kinds of variations and other uh, things to manifest within you and you wonder what's going on. And that's why a lot of people are the way they are there because they, they accept the negativity. And some people, they don't really have it just outside, but they got it up here. Up here, you know. Their, their, their mouth is saying one thing, but their mind is saying something else. Okay, you have this internal tape recorder in here. It's called your subconscious mind. That is an internal, it records everything. And that is the only thing that the universe really responds to. See, you can be saying something out of your mouth that you believe or that you don't believe or that you do this or do that. But if in here, that internal tape recorder is saying something else, that's what the universe hears. Because a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. And so, but if you can get that which is on the inside of your mind transformed, get renewed and get positive and stuff and matching up with the words that you are saying, supernatural things will happen. They won't actually be supernatural, but it will just happen. You become that co-creator that you are because you have ris risen from that state of negativity. Why sit in negativity till you die? Some people, they just sit and they just complain about everything. Nothing ain't never right. Get away from those people. Get away from them. I got relatives like that. I'm serious. <laughs> Thank God I haven't seen them for years. But, you know, I pray for them. Praise God. I remember what my grandmama told me. She said, some people you have to feed with a long handle spoon. <laughs> because I don't want to get infected with negativity. I got enough to deal with myself. You know, uh, science used to say for every one positive uh, yes that you've heard, you've heard 25 no's. That's what they said. Every yes, you've heard 25 no's. And so that get embedded within our consciousness. And so we always think that the answer is no automatically. And then we come to have an enlightened experience. And because we've heard that, uh, no, 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 all my life, all our lives and stuff, we think that when we talk to the Heavenly Father, the answer is going to be no. Because that's what has been embedded. I remember this is a true story, a true story. This is before Zarias was born. And... <laughs> I was talking to my uh, uh, mom and dad. These are like my spiritual mom and dad, this uh, wonderful uh, Norwegian people that uh, had a really close relationship. And I was telling them, I said, you know, I, I said, well, well, when the rise is born, you know, that, you know, I'm, I'm never going to use the word no. And they looked at me and they laughed. <laughs> because, you know, I was wanting, you know, him to be here, here, yes, so that he will grow up knowing that the promises are yes and, and amen, you know, and but they kind of like laugh at me and stuff, and, you know, and, and you know, and, and they were much more mature and all that and stuff, and they, you're yeah, right. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know how many times I said, no, then I always thought about what they said and stuff, you know, and so my, my point is this, that you're going to hear no in life. 
You're going to hear no in life. You're going to hear it from, from family. You're going to hear it from friends. You're going to hear it from maybe a loan officer. You're going to hear it from a, a car dealership. You're going to hear it from a, a, an employer or, or whatever. You're going to hear it no, but that no does not have to be your final answer. Can you hear what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be something that is embedded within your consciousness where you're going to always think that the answer is going to always be no. Oh, I know they're going to say no. Well, I'm going to go and apply for this, but I know they're going to say no. Well, I'm going to go apply for a loan. I know they're going to say no. Well, I'm going to go and do this, but I know they're going to say no. <laughs> You've already sabotaged yourself. Why sit we here till we die? Why sit we here till we die? I'll tell you one little story. Didn't mean to get into this one here. I had gone through a, a phase of, of uh, identity thefts. I lived in Seattle and stuff. And uh, and the Holy Ghost told me, you know, it was right when these like big 50, 50 inches was, was coming out. I had just bought this like nice, nice, nice luxury home and everything. And, and I had envisioned it and stuff like that. And I'm at my desk one day. And I'm thinking, and, I, and I'm just thinking, and, and the Spirit of God says, go. Told me where to go. And get, I'm going like, but, you know, my credit is really not good because I, I'm getting a process of getting it cleared up because I have been a victim of identity theft, right? And the Holy Ghost was moving on me so strong. I went there and I talked to the guy and I says, well, you know, I'm not for sure, you know, how my credit is for the scores, you know, and back then it was, they, they were, ex they were expensive. They were expensive. They weren't like three, four hundred, five hundred dollars and stuff. But it was these big plasmas, you know. It was like nine thousand, ten thousand dollars, you know, for fifty inch, fifty inch when they first came out. I mean, it's not that I needed one because I hardly ever watched sheep. I was traveling a whole lot, but the Holy Ghost wanted it there in the house, looking good, you know. <laughs> you know, He wanted it to match the place and everything, and it's okay, and it's okay. And so, and I gave the guy uh, my name and gave him my uh, social security number and everything. And he ran and he's, oh, yeah, yeah, your, your, your credit is excellent. I'm going, really? I'm going, yes, it is excellent, you know? <laughs> so I had to start to agree with it. My point is this, look, don't sabotage yourself in thinking that you don't qualify for something that you want or that the spirit has given you. Rise up from that. Why sit we here and die in negativity and disqualifying ourselves from what you could have. Now, praise God, you might say, well, I wouldn't pay that much for it, but I wouldn't either. Matter of fact, I didn't. <laughs> because I learned some things about common law and things like that. I discharged all the debt. So I, hallelujah, praise the name of the Lord, you know. <laughs> and so I wouldn't either, you know. But the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost knows what to do. You know, sometimes we have to get rid of the negativity within us. We have to get rid of the, ne the negative people that surround us. Sometimes it is a toxic relationship. Why sit there till you die? Toxic relationship. I'm talking, especially, you know, for, for those of you that may be a little romance, you know, and stuff. And you, and you think that, you know, he is so uh, he's got a six pack, maybe a six figure and six feet. And uh, he don't know Christ. That sounds like six, six, six to me. You know, <laughs> it's, you know, six packs, six feet and uh, six figure and stuff. And, uh, you know, he better make sure that that you are on the same frequency. Amen. If you if you're moving into that, otherwise you're going to get into something almost likely that 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 he's going this way and you're going that way. Now, if you're already in a situation like that, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that is, you know, you know, that, that can't wait for, for, for something to really just happen. So, you know, sometimes you have to, you know, people are dying in toxic relationships. I was there, been there a couple of times. <laughs> dying, literally dying when God is trying to liberate you and set you free. Toxic relationship, especially when we go out the stuff that is, against what the word of God really says, right? You know, and uh, unequally yoke and different things. But sometimes the toxic relationship can be with family members. Family members, you know, Abram and Lot, right? That was a toxic relationship. It, it almost cost Abram dearly. And he had to finally separate from that relative. He still loved him. But if you are in a toxic relationship with people that are draining on you spiritually, draining on you emotionally, people that are constantly just taking but nothing to give. Mm, mm, I know that there are people like that. 
vampires, leeches and stuff, you know, and all they want is just to receive, receive, you know, you got to sever that relationship sometime. If you want to uh, receive the abundance, if you want that famine to stop in your life, you have to sever that relationship. He says, why sit we here till we die? People getting hooked up with all kinds of things because they can't wait on God because they're anxious and then they're they're praying to get into something. Then they're praying, God, please get me out of this hole. I wish I had waited on you. And they're getting in prayer lines and prophesy over me. What does God really want from me? You know, hey, God told you from the very beginning what He wants. You know, and sometimes you put yourself and we put ourselves in a situation. You have to go through. It has to come to pass. It has to come through to pass. You know, and uh, and so, but he says here why sit here we here till we die get out of toxic relationships you know get out of toxic relationships whether it is romantic family friends or whatever you know cut those things off in this coming year don't let that be a part of your life that, and I'm not telling anybody, not, not, I'm not saying leave your, your spouse or nothing like that. You know, you just keep praying because the Bible says that, you know, you're already there. And so if that spouse may be uh, a little bit kind of like, you know, not where he needs to be, your sanctification will sanctify him or her, or at least it'll make them act like it. <laughs> Woo, Jesus, hallelujah, to make them act like it, or either they would just like kind of like, Okay, see you later, you know, and you'll be saying, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> but uh, all right, so sometimes you have to uh, get rid of those toxic relationships. Lifestyles, lifestyles. We're coming into 2023. Lifestyles, the lifestyle maybe that you have for 2022 may not be the lifestyle that you need for 2023. Maybe you need to change some things in your lifestyle. Maybe you need to, uh, and, and this is no judgment. You know, we do this like, especially in this progressive way because we don't want to judge nobody. We don't want to offend people. I don't care if you're offended, you know. I tell people many times, I says, yeah, I'll judge you. <laughs> he that is spirit to judge all things. <laughs> I won't condemn you, <laughs> but I will judge that situation. You know, I will judge, you know, what is going on. I will judge, you know, uh, the uh, what is what is taking place there, not necessarily the person, but uh, you have to have discernment to understand things. And so your lifestyle, our lifestyle, you know, must get uh, uh, into par. We got to get it together. Some, I'm going to just open up somebody's mic for a minute here and somebody say, get it together. Get it, get it together. Come on, get it together. 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 See, because your lifestyle can be what is the problem and that's keeping you from moving forward. You know, the life choice and the way you live. I'm not talking about like when you're here in the Rising Mystics on Monday and when we like have our Thursday things and other things or when you're at your, you know, church or mosque or synagogue or home meeting or whatever you're having and stuff. I'm talking about like the lifestyle where you are living. You are putting on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're not talking about the religious stuff of like being what they call perfect. But I'm talking about really your heart is aligned with God and you really have that relationship with him because it's all about relationship. It's all about relationship. Okay, so we want the lifestyle, you know, to be compatible for this new life. And he, because he says that, hey, your famine is ending. Your famine is ended. Your famine is ended. So you have to let go of uh, some things. Okay, and sometimes we, we're holding on to stuff that's not working. Mm, mm. We keep doing something that is not working. And you know it ain't working, you know, and you keep trying to refix it and prop it up. It's kind of like, you know, with the economy and stuff, how they keep throwing money at it at the, you know, the Federal Reserve keep throwing money. They keep changing the interest rate. They know this stuff ain't working. They keep kicking the can down the road on and on and on. And they know it ain't working and stuff. And so it's insanity. And eventually, very, very soon here, it will all crumble and fall because it is not built on anything. Uh, it is not built on anything. And so that's the way it is. If you are 
doing something that is not working, even if it is a job or whatever, you know, if you're doing something that is not working, you need to uh, maybe reevaluate, reassess things, reassess things, because what they say, the uh, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting something to change. Holy Ghost has some divine strategies for you in this coming year, divine strategies for you in this coming year, divine strategies. But the thing is that we don't like to wait in his presence. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He will make your path straight. But we don't want to acknowledge, we, well, I got my education, I got my degrees, or I know I got my skill set, I got my experience, so I know what to do. Sometimes we need to just say, Father, what is it that you want me to do? What is it that I should be doing? You could even do like a Gideon thing, put out a fleece. If this is what you want me to do, let this happen. If this is what you want me to do, let this happen. If I'm not supposed to be doing this, let this door close. If I'm supposed to be doing this, uh, let this door open. All those things, you know, you're seeking him, acknowledging him in all your ways. These lepers says, why sit here doing the same thing over and over and over, getting nowhere fast until you die? Until you die. Sometimes we know things are not working, but we're too afraid to change. We're too afraid to change because we're creatures of habit. We like doing things the way we're used to. I used to have this shirt. I don't know. I must have had this shirt about 15 years or so. I wore that shirt until it like almost fell off me because that shirt was just so comfortable. You know, I would rush home from, you know, uh, speaking engagement somewhere, take off my suit and tie and I would put on that, that, that old rack. It was fading. It was like plaid and it was like, it was getting so thin because it was so old. But I like that shirt, you know, <laughs> it didn't matter how bad it looked. And one day I realized I got to get rid of this thing here, you know. <laughs> and so that's the way it is. We don't want to change things that we're used to, things that we're accustomed to many times. We don't want to do that. Next thing, poverty, 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 poverty. Ooh, people got poverty mentality. People got, you know, people can have lots of money and still have a poverty mentality. Yes, they can. Yeah, people can have a trust going on and they're living out the trust and still have a poverty mentality, you know, and stuff. And because they, their, their fist is tight, their hands are tight, tight, you know, they don't want to release. They don't want to release anything, right? Because of a poverty mentality. And I'm talking about people even with lots of money and stuff. You know, I remember I used to, you know, hang around these people. Oh, I can't afford this. I can't afford that. I'm, I look at them like sideways. Well, you tell me, I know that you, you know, got at least six figures like just in savings and stuff and, and had you know lots and lots of money but they would go around I can't afford that I can't afford this because of the poverty mentality what if one day something happens what if what if and they keep themselves in this lifestyle of you know people can do what they want to do but I'm talking about a poverty mentality Poverty mentality. There are people that work and work and work and work and never go on a vacation. And they're afraid to spend their money. They're afraid to have any little fun because they have a poverty mentality. How long? How long are we going to sit there? Why are we going to sit here and die in a poverty mentality? Then on the other case, there are a lot of you know, people that don't have very much. And the reason why they don't have very much is because, they, because they're thinking, they're poverty thinking. They're poor because of poor thinking. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Didn't the scripture say it? Poor thinking, poor thinking. You know, I, I you know, I. I don't have that. Thank God. Thank God. I'm not where, you know, I'm going to be, but I'm not where I used to be, you know, and stuff. And uh, I, I don't I don't have that because I realize that the universe, God, the most high has provided abundance and opulence for everything around me. And you know what? Anything that I really want is going to have to come to me one way or the other. 
you know, <laughs> and not by something criminal, but it's going to come. It has to come because I will call it to me and it has to answer because I don't have a poverty mentality. Poverty mentality. Sometimes we have a poverty mentality because the way we was raised, we was raised. But do you realize that the same most high God that is in America or Saudi Arabia or Dubai, these rich countries, is in Mexico, is in South America, is in Haiti, is in Nigeria, is in Malawi, is in India, is in whatever country that they consider a third world or developing nation. He's the God of all riches. He's the God of all wealth. And your prosperity is not determined by the economy. It is not determined by what they do at the Federal Reserve. It's not determined. It shouldn't be determined by the check they write out for you every few weeks that ain't even enough, that's not even, uh, uh, can't even come close to what you're worth or anything, you know. And so you have to change your mind, change your mind. And in this year 23, the Lord will be opening up many avenues of prosperity and abundance for his people, despite what the news say. I say, glory to God. Despite what the news, despite what happens in the world arena with the wars and with the other things and with the inflation, the recession and all of that, the people of God will thrive. If you know who you are, if you know who you are, the people that do know their God, Hashe Lobo Kobe, the scripture says, the people that do know their God shall be strong, Daniel says, and shall act, act. Some of y'all need to act up. Tell the person next to you, say act up, <laughs> act up. Come on, act up. I remember my, my uh, mom and my parents and stuff is stop acting up. Stop acting up. So I'm telling you, act up. You need to act up. <laughs> you need to start acting like you are who you are. Why sit we here till we die? That poverty mentality that is there. And then we'd be looking at people prospering, going, you know, that's just, that's just wearliness. That's just, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, and, and you hear these, you hear these, like, let me, let me put this in another uh, thing here. You, you hear these, like, religious hypocrites say stuff like this well you know i don't really you know i don't really want a lot of things and stuff like that all i want is jesus all i want is jesus you know i remember living in canada they used to sing this song about giving me a cabin in the corner of glory land i never sang that part yeah there's country up there they sing country especially way up north and they would still sing that even you know, in this day now. And so, as, no, no, what are we saying to ourselves? We got to watch what we're saying, what we are singing, what we are speaking on ourselves. You know, you are royalty. You are divine beings. You are sons and daughters of the most high God. And as we begin to think that way, your life will change in this coming year. It is happening. You say, oh, I've heard it before. Nothing happened. Nothing didn't happen because you didn't make it happen. <laughs> and you didn't really believe it. But I want to tell you, based on if you were in the class last week and we read the heavens and stuff, based on what the heavens are saying and all of that, you know, it's going to be awesome. It is going to be awesome. So I'm trying to help you to get into that space uh, for you self uh, financially, spiritually and all of that. You know, don't die in that spot here, you know, people are there. There's the walking dead that's happening now. The, the world is filled with zombies. People are just stuck to their devices, you know, <laughs> stuck to some screen or whatever. And those that may not, they're still like dead, dead, dead. But that is not your portion. That is not your portion. God blesses when you move away from death or dead things. Poverty mentality. That's a part of the curse. It's a part of the curse. Oh, should we start to want natural things? Should we want uh, material things? Yes, yes, you should. <laughs> you should. You should want them. Now, if you 
saying that you don't want them is because you have been greatly deceived. You've deceived yourself or you've allowed someone to deceive you because when God created Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden and placed them there, it was voluptuous living. It was more than enough. It was opulence. And so the most had created every person with that desire for abundance within them. It is religion or religious thinking or just crazy cuckoo thinking that gets people's minds mixed up and think that, oh, I should not want these things. Why should you want them? We're going to talk about that in a little while so that you can be a blessing to others. How do you think that, well, just yesterday, you some of you saw the videos. We were, got a chance to go out on the streets and partner with some of the other ministers in the area. Look at Jeremiah. He was so excited because we like going out there on the streets ministering. We like going out there feeding the homeless and we like going out there, uh, let me remove this here. Okay, we like going out there feeding the homeless and giving clothes out and different things like that. You know, how could that happen? That did not just happen by abracadabra in that sense there. Of course, it was like, you know, we spoke and God, but it, it, it came to pass because there was monies made available to go and buy hundreds of uh was it Popeye's chicken yeah hundreds of Popeye chicken sandwiches for these people and stuff and so you can give yourself a hand those of you that that do give from time to time here because the the monies that that come into here goes into many places Philippines you've seen pastor there and and, and other in other places and stuff and so you know and so the monies and so uh to to buy that and uh, and then clothing, a lot of the clothing that was donated by the sisters has a warehouse of stuff and, and shoes and all. But it, that's how it happens. This is why you need wealth. <laughs> this is why you need abundance so that you can help other people, help other people. It is messed up people. It is stingy, greedy people that will never really achieve all that God has for them that thinks otherwise. Sorry, but that's just the way it is. You know, you would never achieve uh, the maturity of spirit and level that God has for you until you can think that way and think of giving back, helping, doing something, you know, because for God so loved the world that he did what? Gave, 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 gave. Yes, he did. Okay, so why sit we here till we die in that poverty mentality, that stinky poverty mentality, you know? Okay, then there's ooh, unhealthy living. Hmm. Oh, yeah. See, sometimes, you know, people die before their time. People die before their time because they won't do just some very little things of change in the way they eat because their God has become their belly. Their God has become their belly. And they want to put all kinds of garbage in their belly and it gets stuck up, hung up in the colons and everything. And that's where all the diseases come from. And then they're in prayer lines and they're wanting prayer. Help me, please deliver me. Help me prophesy to me. Cast this out. Cast that food out and you give your enema. No, it's all. But, 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 but seriously speaking, and, you know, and, and we, do, we do understand. And I, you know, I have the same problem sometimes. I told you, sweets, sweetness is my weakness. I love cakes. I love pastries. I love breads. Oh my God, Indian fried bread. Oh, in East Indian, none, none. Oh my God, I could just eat that up, right? You know, that's why I got a few little, you know, pounds that's gathered around here because of things like that. But you know what I'm talking about. How long are we going to do that? You know, why sit we here till we die? You know, sitting at the table. You know, Christmas is coming up. Uh, uh, what was that? Thanksgiving just happened. We'll be gorge ourselves with all of this stuff. And then what? One month later, we go do the same thing all over again. And we wonder why some months down the road, things are breaking down. Things are not working. Blood pressure goes up. Insulin level goes high and all of this stuff, you know. Why sit we here at the table eating until we die? eating all the stuff that's not good for you and stuff, okay? Change it, change it in 2023 so that you can live and declare the works, the glory of God. And I'm not saying that in a 
judgmental way, because as I say, I am guilty of that too. And I'm telling myself that I am changing some things in this coming uh, year also, changing right now, matter of fact. Depression, depression. Why sit we here till we die in depression? People become depressed, depressed, depressed. Sometimes there's a chemical depression. I mean, it's just there. You don't, it's not even, you know, your fault, but it's, you know, something is happening within you, you know? And so, but I found out that uh, uh, over the years and stuff that maybe if you take some of the carbs out or some of the other things out of your diet and stuff, the chemicals will come back into balance and stuff. And, uh, you won't be going through the chemical depression or the seasonal, what is that called? The, the seasonal, the, the seasonal depression, you know, SAD, they call it. Yeah, the SADs and stuff like that. You know, that is not for you. That is not for you. Sometimes we go through loss and then there's depression. There's the lingering thing. You know, God told, I think they told, God told them that to mourn for Moses, I believe it was 40 days, something like that, 30, 40 days. Somebody need to shout, that's enough. Let me open up your mics again for just a minute. Somebody shout, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's, that's enough. enough. That's 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 enough. And it doesn't mean that you forget the person, anything like that. But if you linger beyond that, in that state of like deep grief, when we know that healing has to take place and healing is a, is a process, different people uh, process things differently and stuff like that. But if you linger beyond that, it gets into depression because now the chemicals in your body and other things in your, in your head and stuff is, is like off balance and stuff. And they're secreting uh, things that, that, that's going to make you more depressed instead of the, uh, the, the serotonin and other things that's going to bring you joy, you know, and stuff because of, there is that, because that's that prolonged uh, period of holding the frequency of grief and loss. And it's affecting how the chemicals release, the, how the hormones release the chemicals uh, in your brain and throughout your body. So why sit we here in depression till we die? Why sit in despair till we die? There are some people that get to a point in their depression, I'm not making fun of it, I've been there several times been there to the point of wanting to end my life and, and things of that sort, you know, so I know how it works, been there to the point of being on drugs, you know, for it, you know, and things of that sort. So I know how it works and stuff. But there are there, there are sometimes, uh, we'll say it this way, that the enemy will trick people into just finding comfort in that depressed state. And especially around this time of the year, especially this time of the year when, you know, that loved one is not there that uh, used to be there. You know, the Christmas the families are getting together and things like that. And I remember people used to ask me like years ago, my mother passed away. Well, how is, how are you doing to this season? And I know I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I don't really do Christmas. My mother didn't do Christmas. We stopped that long ago. So no, so I'm not really missing anything, you know, <laughs> and I've gone through that process, right, and stuff, and uh, and so you have to get yourself through that, you know, uh, why sit there in depression until you die? Matter of fact, God told them, he says, I'm going to give you one day to be depressed out of the year. One day, that's what God told them. Now, that's apart from like your grief and stuff when you're getting through various things of loss. And but God told them, he says, I want you to be, I want you to be depressed. Matter of fact, if you don't be depressed, you should be stoned to death. That's in your Bible. You know what day that was? That was the holiest day of the year. That was a day of atonement. And he's, I want you to depress yourself. I want you to think on all the horrible things that would depress you and uh, make you upset and make you sad and make you feel like you are nothing and just tear you down. Because I want you to, to just go through that whole day. Matter of fact, I want you to fast while you're doing it. That's the truth. It's in your Bible. It was called the fast. Day of atonement. And it was the holiest day of the year. Why? Because that depression, when it's not something chronic, can be something holy. It can be something powerful because it can be a turning point in your life. 
where you go within and you analyze and you see yourself how you are and then you make the changes of how you want to be and what the father sees you as. It can be something very sacred and holy, but if it is something that is prolonged, it becomes devilish. It will wear you down. It becomes a mental illness. You won't even know it. You're depressed. You won't even know why and how to get out of it and stuff. Been there, done that. Didn't want to get out of the bed. Didn't get out of the bed and all kinds of things like that. So these things I'm talking to you about are not something that I just read in a psychology manual or book, but I'm talking about my experience. And with this word here, why sit we here till we die? Get out of depression, get out of depression, get out of depression. I, I'm going to just ask uh, those of you that can, I want everybody that can, I want you to stand up and I want you to shake yourself. I want you to mm. shake yourself from everything. If you're sitting down, shake yourself, shake yourself. Come on, shake yourself from anything that would cling on to you and hold on to you. Just, just brush it off, brush it off, brush off all of that stuff, all of that the stuff that's been put on you by others or stuff that you put on you and that you've allowed, just shake it off of you. Shake it off of you. Don't let anything hold you down, depress you any longer. Mm. Hallelujah. Somebody need to shout, I'm in control. Can you open up your mind? I'm in control. I'm in control. I am I'm in control. control. That's right. I'm in control. 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 You're the one. Why sit we here till we die? The next one is fear. Mm. People sitting around in fear, they're afraid to do anything. They're afraid to take any chances at all. Can somebody say entrepreneur? You got to have an entrepreneur spirit. You got to have an, you have to be a risk taker. Well, but last time it didn't work. I'm not talking about last time, this time. You can't base your life on just what didn't work before. You know, you have to be willing to take chances, willing to take chances, willing to take, at least you, at least I tried it. It didn't work. So at least I learned something that didn't work. So I'm going to try something else when it come along instead of saying, I'm never going to try anything again. That's the way some people are in relationships and stuff. You know, they had a really, really bad one and stuff, you know. And so they, they decide I'm never going to, I'm never going to have another one again. I'm never going to meet anybody. I'm going to close my heart up or whatever like that. I'm never going to do that again, whatever, you know, and if a person decides, you know, that's okay, but I'm just saying, you know, fear, fear, fear. We got to overcome the fear. We got to overcome the fear and stuff, you know, sometimes it's a business deal. Sometimes it's like with spirituality. Sometimes it's with, uh, you know, with a career or whatever, you know, fear. We got to overcome fear. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. You got to have a sound <coughs> mind in this day to function you need a sound mind you need a because you're living around crazy folks you live you you live around i'm talking about people that are you know as my grandmother would say natural born crazy they they're just crazy i mean people will go and shoot up things they see other people doing it say oh i want to do it too i want to become famous they're not thinking about they can lose their life or they're gonna be put in jail for like 20 30 years or so but i just want 10 minutes of fame i want my my name in a newspaper so people can read about i did this crazy you know crazy people kill you over over a popeye sandwich that dirty bird <laughs> that fights break out you know over a sandwich you know, over a sandwich, uh, crazy, crazy, crazy people are dying, a nickel, driving down the road. Look at somebody. You look to look at them too long. Maybe you're not even looking at them, but you're looking at something beyond them and they think you're looking at them. They want to pull out a gun. Crazy. So we're living in time where there are crazy people all around you. Don't be one of them <laughs> and don't operate in fear. 
You got to be bold as a lion, bold as a lion. Why sit we here till we die? That's what they said. Let me get back to this word here for a minute here. I hope you guys get in this. This is what the Holy Ghost gave me. Actually, I was up. I was on I was on a platform about maybe two, three weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, something like that. And uh, it was not even a, a quote unquote religious platform, but it was a it was a it was a financial thing that was going on. And uh, based on biblical finances and stuff like that, principles and stuff, I'll tell you guys about that. You'll get something. And um, and so the uh, the leader, uh, you know, he asked me to, they don't even know me or anything like that. They asked me to say something. And so, and I opened my mouth to say one thing and all at once the Holy Ghost came out, you know, and I went off on this message here. I hadn't read this passage in years and, and it just blew the place up. People were like shouting and everything. This is not even church. It was a, it was a, like a financial seminar and just, you know, I'm going, and I felt like a little bit bad, but even, even the, uh, even the leaders, you know, he was like, he was like pounding the thing and just, and, it's, and it was like crazy. And I'm going, oh, oh, I was, I was like in my chair, I was upstairs, like my office, and the chair was moving back and I was moving and I was gone, just totally gone. And then when I came to myself, <laughs> anybody ever have those experiences where the Holy Ghost is like walking and you don't know what you're doing and stuff. And when I came to myself, I'm going, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to like go like that. And they were going, wow. They was going on and on and on like that. And this guy says, you know what? I'm going to use that message as one of my motivational speakers. I said, go ahead, go ahead, you know? And so, but this is the word that, that came to me today. The Lord began to speak and say, speak this to the people. You know, why sit here till we die? And verse four says this of Second Kings chapter seven. If we say we enter into the city, I just read you that a little while ago, right? Okay, so they, they had three options. Three options, three choices. You know, life is about choices. Three, just three. It was only three. It was only three. Okay, let's see here. It says, uh, if we go, if we enter into the city, there's a famine there. Oh, you know, sometimes under pressure, just at the point when your breakthrough is about to come, just when God's about to do it and that prophecy that you've been waiting on is about to be fulfilled, just when all heaven is about to break through, the thought would say, hey, go back to the world. Go back to where you used to. Go back to what you know. Go back to smoking, drinking, slinging, and, you know, whoremongering or whoring, all this stuff, you know. Go, you know, what is the use you're trying to live, you know, holy, you know, you want to be this mystic. Go back to this stuff. You know, if we go back there, there's death there. And the thought will come to people's mind. Well, let's, let's go back to something that is familiar. Let's go back to that lifestyle drugs, alcohol. Let's go back to the depression. Let's go back to religion, you know, or whatever. Let's go back. If we, Let's go back. Then it says, well, there's another option, you know. If we go into their camp, you know, if we go to the enemy's camp, all they can do is kill us and we're going to die anyway. You got to have that kind of attitude. You got to have that. I that you know what did Esther say? If I perish, I perish. Devil, the worst thing you can do is destroy this physical body. But the Hebrew boy says, "Hey, you know what? You know we we know we know the Most High and stuff. So we know what He can do. But if He don't do it, we ain't gonna bow. We ain't gonna do what you're saying. That we're not gonna be a part of this." system here they just went on you know tie me up wrap me up or whatever i'll dance around in your fire <laughs> you get burned up matter of fact that was kind of like a portal we'll talk about that another time seven times hotter Ooh, and who came through that portal mm, mm, mm. we won't get there i don't want to go metaphysical on you right right now we want to just we want to just deal with this right here so you won't get distracted because sometimes we get way out here in the spiritual things and we forget about the the, the, the physical we got to have the balance that's why the bible says that a wise steward knows a wise householder knows how to give out both old and new that's what i'm doing because I'm a wise householder, you know, <laughs> I'm a wise steward over God's kingdom. And so, you know, one day we'll have you way out there. You're like into the 
heights of the heavens or into the depths and stuff, then we'll come right back and dealing with your life here, you know, because it makes no sense if we talk about all of these wonderful mystical things and you don't know how to apply them to your life, it don't value you anything. It is not worth anything. Okay, so so he says, all right, let's let's let, if we go back to the city, if we go back to the world, you know, we know they're all dead and dying and stuff like that. There's nothing but starvation there. They don't have nothing. We're gonna die there. If we go to the enemy's camp, you know, and stuff, all they can do is just kill us and stuff. And uh, if we sit here and do nothing, we're gonna still die. So what you gonna do? 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 I need to I need to open up your mics here, and somebody needs to say, "What you gonna do?" Say it like that. What you gonna do? 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 Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I can imagine, you know, they're right there. Now, notice these are lepers. Number one, they're unclean because they were deemed unclean because of leprosy. The Bible doesn't really tell us what stage of their leprosy was in, if it was in first stage, second stage, third stage, or fourth stage, you know how they say the cancers and stuff like that, you know. But I don't know. It could have been that with some of them, they were in like fourth stage. Some of them could have had their hands already eaten off and their fingers already eaten off. Some of them could have had their toes and legs gone and stuff like that, you know. Do you do understand that they were in an emergency situation, right? You do understand that they were outcasts. They were ostracized because of the disease and sickness that they had. They couldn't be in the city and that they were out there, okay? And that, and that whenever they came somewhere, they had to announce themselves by saying, unclean, unclean, unclean. Then people would run all over the place, like, right, you know? Oh, my God. I'm sure that they would have loved Black Friday, you know? <laughs> they had Black Friday back then and stuff, you know. All they had to do with these long lines wrapped around the, the Walmart and these other places, unclean, unclean people were scattered. They would be running like ants everywhere, right? And they would just go right on in and pick up their TVs and their computers and everything, right? You know, <laughs> so I'm I'm serious. This is this is the way it was here. And so and so they're out there now. These guys, I remember I was in Russia once and I preached this message and I had four people come up front. Matter of fact, I think I even did it in San Diego once and stuff at the prophetic conference there. And I was preaching this message and I, and you know, the Russian people are very stoic people. I told you about that and stuff. The Slavic people are, you know, and, and, and I just broke all their rules, all their laws and, you know, under the power of the Holy Ghost, of course, and stuff, you know, and they just loved the hell out of me. They love me to death. You know, I, I told them I'm the black Russian from the black sea. <laughs> <laughs> matter of fact god gave me so much favor over there this is the truth i lie not before god this is the truth and i, I had you know this was over 10 years ago like well yeah over 15 years ago matter of fact and so i had i had learned enough russian to to get throughout the nation by myself right because i used to travel with interpreters and stuff and you know sometimes your interpreters like uh if you ever <laughs> you know you <laughs> they they can be a problem right and so i had a problem with one interpreter and stuff. And so he decided to go back because he was upset. My, the message was going a little bit too deep for his theological mind because he was a Bible school student and all of that brilliant mind and everything, excellent interpreter and stuff. But it, it was just a little bit too much for him. Sometimes, sometimes you know that you are a little bit too much for people. Yeah, you're a little bit too much for people. People just can't, they don't know how to handle you, you know, because you got so much of the Christ, the God that's oozing from your being and they don't know how to really just to, to deal with you. And so and so I had to uh, I had to get around by myself and I had another sister with me named Patty. And so some of y'all remember her, know you heard me talk about her and stuff. She's this little about five foot woman, you know, occasionally with just short hair and stuff. And uh and we had to get back to Moscow, the fly out of Moscow. And God gave me just so much favor with people. So here I am in the airport. And I'm telling you, this is the truth. And I'm and I'm talking to the people at the airport, you know, there at, uh, what was it? Uh, Shervamitvo, Shervamitvo Airport there, the, the big one. And so, and I'm trying to get them to, to realize that my ticket and everything is valid. My visa and everything is valid. And I'm speaking in broken Russian and everything. And here's this other guy that don't even know me or anything like that. And he's listening to me. He's looking at me. And this is the truth. This is the truth. And he started yelling 
at these airport attendants and stuff, listen to the nigger. Listen to the <laughs> And we looked around and, and he, he did not mean it in a derogatory way, but because of him living way over there, he doesn't know. And he listened to the nigger. <laughs> that was probably the only time that I didn't mind being called. <laughs> and you know what? They listened to the nigger. No. <laughs> <laughs> that is the truth. That is the truth. And the guy was like yelling and he was upset with them because he, he could understand what I was saying. They were giving me a hard time because, you know, during those days, as a matter of fact, I even got locked up in, in Ukraine, was in jail. I got arrested several times in Russia and stuff. They tried to do one of those things that they did with like, uh, what was her name? But uh, Brittany Griner and stuff like that. Although I didn't have any of that stuff. They, they said, well, well, you know, we could say you got this, we could say you got that. And so I thank God I had enough money with me to buy my way out of these small time cops and stuff. <laughs> that is the truth. That is the truth. No lie, no exaggeration. And if you have followed the ministry for some years and stuff, and I've read some of the testimonies from back in that era and stuff, we, we posted them, right? So the guy, listen to the nigger, listen. To <laughs> and they listen, praise God. And the, the favor of God came in there. And we were able to get that flight out of Moscow or <laughs> all the way to Seattle and stuff without paying extra money. That's another story why they how they try to get you because you're American, so they think you got lots of money, right? And they change the prices around and all kinds of stuff. You know, if you've traveled abroad, you know what I'm talking about, right? Especially Eastern Europe and over in that area there. <laughs> okay, now so <laughs> so I'm talking about the favor of God. That was the favor of God. I was, oh. Brother, just keep keep it up. Keep saying it. He he said it multiple times, you know, yelling at them and, you know, just with a lot of passion and stuff. And they listen. OK, so he says, why sit we here till you die? These guys are unclean. They're unclean. They got leprosy. I don't know what stage. Maybe some of them were stage one, stage two, three, four. Anyway, I did this message in Russia, as I was saying, and stuff. And as this is very stoic people, right? And I broke all the rules and God gave me so much favor. God gave me revival. And I could tell you stories, all true stories of the miracles and the supernatural. Matter of fact, to such a degree, I was going to move there. And God says, no, stop me. Just did in my track. He says, you will go back and forth, but you will not live there. So anyway, I'm there. I'm preaching. And I said, I want four guys to come up here, right? So I get four guys. And I says, one guy is going to, you know, act like he's got like just hopping like on one leg. The other guy is his 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 hand is missing. Another guy, maybe uh, his other leg or, or foot is missing and stuff. And I says, I says, these are the four lepers. The Bible is not clear on what stage their leprosy was in, how bad it was. But you know that this disease of leprosy, it eats away. It is a disease that eats off your fingers, your limbs and everything and stuff, you know. And so you have this bad smell and you got these white sores all over your body and everything. And so and I says, these guys in their extreme condition. I don't see nobody on here in that condition. In their extreme condition says, I am not going to settle for this any longer. I am not going to stay in this mindset any longer. Why sit we here till we die? If we're going to die, let's die trying to do something. I want to tell you and uh, encourage you that don't let this year, this coming year, be like this past year. Step out and do something. Try something. Do something for the kingdom of heaven. You might say, well, I don't know how to preach. I don't know how to prophesy. Just open your mouth if that's what you want to do. And he will speak through you. He will speak for you. You see it all the time right here on this platform. You know, oh, I don't have the money to do this. I don't have the money. I didn't have the money to travel all over the world and to do the things that we did, build churches and all kinds of stuff, orphanages and uh, rehab centers in Siberia, uh, rehab center in uh, 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 Kafkas area, the, the Caucasus mountains of the South and all, did not, did it all without money. money. But the most high, when he give the vision, he will give the provision for it. If he gives you the vision, he will give the provision and you don't have to try to figure out how it's going to come. All you have to do is say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Okay. All right.
So he says, we can go back to the world. We're gonna die there. All those people are dying and everything. You know, we can go to the enemy's camp, take a chance, you know, or we can just sit here and do nothing. We ain't gonna sit here and do nothing, are we, mystics? We're not gonna sit here and do nothing. We're not going to sit here and do nothing. Your life is not going to be like it was before in the name of Yeshua. I believe that for each and every one of you on every level, your life is changing, that you are being transformed. And you cannot remain in the space where you were before. You can't because of the prophetic word that is released from this space is alive. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And if you receive it, and if you believe it, it will transform your life. Just as the Most High told Ezekiel, can these bones live, these dry bones live? He says, God, you know. He says, all you have to do is prophesy. <laughs> Just prophesy to them. Prophesy, speak the word of the Lord, and that word will bring resurrection power. That word will raise them up to become a mighty army of uh, that they don't even realize that they are. It'll raise you up to be that business person, that entrepreneur, that minister, or that uh that uh kingdom giver, or it'll raise you up to divine health and wholeness, that person of joy and peace. It will do it. It will do it. Okay, let me go ahead. So he says, and they rose in the twilight. Can somebody shout twilight? Okay, I didn't open your mics, but you can still shout it twilight, twilight. Somebody says, it's dark, it's dark, it's dark, it's dark. So, and, and they went to the enemy's camp. Now, and here they were, just imagine in your mind, these four guys, this is like what the illustration I did uh, in Russia. I had the four guys stand there and I told them, to, okay, now walk, walk. But I said, don't move your leg, God. Don't you that got your leg, you know, up. Do not, you cannot use that. You have to use one leg. You that got your arm, you can't, you know. And so what, what happened? They had to hang on to each other. They had to hang on to each other. Now, I don't know if that's exactly the way it was, but I do know that they had leprosy. And I do know that they were dying of leprosy. There was no hope for them. I don't know how extreme it was. And I do know that the scripture says that as they got up and start walking, the scripture says this is as they rose up. See, you got to get up. You got to get up. You got to get up. Get up mentally. Get up emotionally. Forget it. Get, get out of that victim mentality. Everybody's against me. Nobody loves me. Nobody's going to give me a chance that's right nobody is going to give you a chance because according to your word so be it unto you according to your faith so be it unto you as long as you have a victim mentality and thinking that everything and everybody's against you that's what the universe is going to give to you and it's going to prove it every time because i knew it that's right you didn't know it you created it <laughs> you created it. but you got to get up and say everybody loves me it's like the show everybody loves raymond I never even saw an episode, but I, I like the title. You know, everybody, you got to say, everybody loves Dr. Sharonda. Everybody loves Linda. Everybody loves Patricia. Everybody loves David. Everybody loves Jeremy Alzarites. Everybody loves Tara. Everybody loves Vaughn. Everybody loves the uh, iPhone Alice. Everybody loves <laughs> High Priest. Everybody loves Blair, Dr. Cooper. Everybody loves Jarvis, uh, Norma, Shauna, Maya, Lucy. Uh, St. Anne, uh, uh, Fabre, uh, and all of you, everybody loves you. <laughs> you know, I can't call all your names less. Uh, I think it's Le Leah. Everybody loves you. Everybody loves you, Norma. <laughs> okay. Everybody loves you. Everybody loves you, Gina, uh, Tony, uh, Dr. Angela, ODNA, Dutch and, and Ashley there. Everybody loves you. Okay. Uh, Pastor Dorothy, Glenn, May, uh, Pastor Allen. Okay. I'm not going to call all your names. Let's see this. But you know, everybody loves you. <laughs> everybody loves you. Everybody loves you. Okay. So now get up in the twilight. He rose up. The scripture says, and they went to the camp of the enemy. You know, sometimes you have to, you know, go right to where the devil is, so to speak. You got to go right to the enemy's camp. Sometimes you have to get in the face of people. You have to have some of that, you know, see some of y'all got saved. I don't know. Uh, some of y'all, you know, you, you got so saved, you don't have none of that hood in you. I know you came from the hood. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> And you got so saved and so sanctified that you have none of that hood left in you. You know, backtrack, please backtrack, because, you know, although I, I, I did spend some of my life in the hood, 
you know, in, uh, and in the projects, uh, uh, you know, for several years, my, I think it was my junior high years or high school years and stuff like that. We had to move to the hood and I had to get hoodie. You know, I had to know, you know, that I know and stuff. Uh, and so, and so when God saved me, you know, and, uh, he really did save me and fill me with the Holy ghost. However, However, it doesn't mean that I am a floor mat to anybody. <laughs> and, and, it, and it means that, you know, if need be, I will lay hands and feet on you, you know, the best that, to my ability. <laughs> but I don't I don't go there. I don't do that. But what I'm saying is you got to have that mindset of a warrior because the righteous shall be bold as a lion. You don't go looking for a fight. But if there is one there and people want to persist, OK, I'm going to do my best. I might lose, but I ain't going to lose without swinging. You know, <laughs> do you hear what I'm saying? And you have to be that way with life where you have to become aggressive because uh, I think what I used to say, uh, if you take life, live life casually, you will become a casualty. If you live life casually, you will become a casualty. And, you know, this strange Western Christianity that ain't Christianity and stuff. Say Jesus, you know, and somebody to you, tender. Uh, okay, I only got two cheeks. Okay, and I'm not going to hit those there. But anyway, so uh, you know, but you, know, you have to have some of that within you. And if you, and if you guys, some of you guys were not raised like on the reservation or in a hood. Some of you, who are my reservation people? At you, y'all know what I'm talking about. Like you know, I lived on a reservation, <laughs> reservation, and so. And so you know, but some of y'all weren't, and I understand. I understand. God will help you. Look, look at Vaughn up there. He knows. He 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 lived in the hood. He I, he don't mind me saying this. He lived in the hood. <laughs> Brother can he he can defend himself. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> and so so what I'm saying, you have to take that energy that is there. You have to take that energy and use it, channel it toward whatever is challenging the promises and the power of God in your life. You have to take that energy and use it for that. The kingdom of heaven suffered violent, but the violent take it by force. And no, I'm not saying go get guns and weapons or things like that. I'm talking about your attitude because your attitude will determine your altitude, how you uh, uh, address things or deal with things. And these guys here, although they were maybe hopping around, they hopped all the way to the enemy's camp. And, you know, when they got up and started to do something, that's when God got up. Mm, mm, mm. Did you hear that? When, uh, as my, I always refer back to my grandmama because she's many times with me, kind of chiming through me, crazy stuff, I don't know. And, uh, and my grandmama used to say uh, that if you make one step, he'll make two. <laughs> but you got to make that one step. You got to get up. And once you get up, uh, maybe not necessarily literally, but get up in your mind, in your thinking and uh, have a plan or something, then the universe, the Holy Ghost is going to get up. So, uh oh, he's ready now. See, because the teacher cannot, the master can't come <clears throat> until the student is ready. Your blessings that God has for you can't manifest until you are ready for them, till you are ready to receive them, okay? That man, that woman that you're waiting on or whatever, maybe can't manifest until you are ready for the, time, the kind that you are looking for. And when you get ready, there she comes. Ooh, Jesus, hallelujah, you know? Be like, uh, what was this? Isaac out there meditating in the field. Um, you know the stories. This is in your Bible. Isaac's out there meditating in the field. Um, and all at once he hears some camels coming. And he looked up and he see this lady with these long earrings dangling. You know, the camel's moving. <laughs> oh, that, that broke that meditation up the ser uh, service right away. You know, he... Okay, and this is it. There was his rib, Rebecca, right? <laughs> and so some of the things can't come until you are prepared, till you are ready for it. That promotion cannot come until you are ready for it. That raise, that business, that ministry cannot until you are ready for it. Let's see what else here. Okay, so they got up in the twilight. Here they go. 
And so, and it says, for, for Yahweh had made the host of the Syrians to hear the noise of the chariots. Oh my God, there were no chariots there. Here are these crippled guys walking, you know, hopping, stumbling along the way. And God magnified what they were doing. He magnified the sounds of their feet on the ground as they hopped, as they walked, as they, you know, dragged themselves along the way. He magnified it. God will magnify your little effort. He will magnify. And the enemy went running. The enemy, whatever your enemy is, if it's something that you've just created within your mind, if you can get up from that, it will go running. If there's a real enemy around you and stuff, you know, it will run from you because now you become aware. You're online. You're like AI, but you're not artificial intelligence. You're the real until you are DI. Divine intelligence has come online. And now everything knows that you know that you have the power over. It, and so it will run. It will run. It will run. I could tell you stories of times work on the job. I won't go into that where, you know, people try to act up. People try to act up on the job and try to get you fired and all kinds of stuff like that. You know, I just go into my closet. I just like pull up my altar here. <laughs> and the tables were turned around like, just like that. Just like that. You have to know who you are. You have to know who you are. Okay. So uh, for, the, for Yahweh had made the host of the Syrians hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, lo, the king of Israel had hired against us the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come. And wherefore they arose uh, in twilight and fled. Ooh, twilight, something about twilight, you know, and during that dark time, even the enemy ran and things were changing for these men because they dared to get up, get up. And when the lepers came to the edge of the camp, they went back, uh, they went into one of the tents and they did eat and drink and they carried from their silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and came again to another one and to another one and carried from there and they went and hid it too. Can somebody say overnight millionaires? <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm prophesying about. These guys went from having only the clothes on their back homeless out there, you know, in this little encampment, not even in the city on the outskirts, like the pictures we showed you yesterday. And they became overnight millionaires, just like how they do it. Let me, let me try to pull this up here. I can't see if I can do it. How they do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like yeah, just like that. Yeah, you, you got it. Let, let me let me highlight this this one here. She she's she's getting it. Uh let me see if I can uh how you do it? There you go. Okay, there, do it one more time. There you go. All right, all right. <laughs> she got it. So just like that, just like that, you get paid. Just like that, you get paid. Now, this was more than what they were even expecting because, see, you serve the Almighty God, according to Ephesians 3.20, unto him who is able mm, 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 to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that you can even think not even think, but think or ask according to the power that is working on the inside of you. But that power did not become activated until they got up. That power in you will not become activated until you get up, get out of that state of mind, change your position and realize that you have the power and that God wants the best for your life. Woo! Glory to God. I feel like just screaming here. <laughs> Hey, somebody need to scream for me. I'm going to open your mics and let somebody just really this well, scream. But I live in this like neighborhood that's kind of quiet and everything like that. And we kind of knew here. Oh. Let's go. Somebody scream for yes, me. yes, 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 Mm. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. <laughs> okay, so anyway, <laughs> they went to the enemy's camp, and there was like the gold, the silver, the Gucci bags, the Gucci shoes, the Gucci belts, <laughs> and all the name brand stuff that people like, you know. <laughs> It's okay if you like that. You can have it. 
I'd rather my name be on it, what I'm wearing, but, <laughs> but if you want that, you can have, so all the stuff, see, because they have been out there for some time, they had plundered other communities and nations all around them, and they had all of this stuff with them, and they had been out there for months, months, every once in a while, they put on something nice, because they know that inside that gate, those people are starving, they eating, they eating doves doo-doo just to get by, like, right, they're eating asses heads, you know, <laughs> eat ass and everything, you know, just to get by, you know, and just to, just to survive, they are cannibals, you know, eating one another and stuff just to get by, and so they got all the finery stuff, all the nights, you know, isn't it like, like it is like this out there in the world, this system and stuff, you see these people on TV, these celebrities and all of these other folks and stuff that people go, ooh, ah, over. And then, you know, they want to, I'm not saying that anything is wrong with that, you know, and stuff like that. And then, you know, the, the, the people that are in all of them can barely pay their bills, <laughs> can barely get from place to place and stuff, you know, and they're ooh and ah and over these people, <laughs> you know, thank God for them. No, no, no judgment, no jealousy there, but I'm just stating something here, not realizing that they are the celebrity. You are a celebrity. You are a star. And uh, all you have to do is get up and you will start to shine. You will start to shine. All right. Well, you know, I, I don't believe that the book of Daniel says it. He says that those that be wise would be wise. They would be like the stars of the firmament that shine and that bring men into righteousness. So God wants you to be a star. Turn to the person next to you. Say, God wants you to be a star. God wants you to be a star. You know, you can't see the person, but they're there. They're there. They're there. They're, they're. I'm looking at all of you here. Just go like this. Go like this, uh, uh, Vaughn. God wants you to be a star. That's it. That's it. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> okay. So here we go. So. Now, here we go. We're almost finished here. Almost finished here. I hope you guys getting this. Okay, so the lepers, and they here they are. They're drinking. They're eating. They got food now. Good food. I mean, they got their, uh, they got their, there is no, no McDonald's stuff. No, no, no unhappy meals and stuff like that and things like that, you know. But I'm talking about real food that they, they out there eating. They got like the candy yams. They got the kale. They got the cornbread going on. They got the broccoli, they got all of the, the stir fry and everything, you know, because these people, you know, God heard them hear all of this noise and stuff. And while they were there cooking at twilight, it's twilight, it's evening time, people about ready to eat, right? And they hungry and stuff. And they got all the food out there and they're fanning the smells of the food over so that the so that people over in Samaria can, can smell it go, oh, I wish I had that. You know how, how it is, you know, you know, when you, you know, toward the end of the month and stuff, or just at the first of the month when you know, the check didn't come in yet or they didn't pay you right and you can smell your neighbor's food. Ooh, that smells so good. Ooh, I can't wait till my check come in. Ooh, I can't wait till, you know, I get paid. Ooh, is that a pound? Can, can you smell that? Mmm, that smells so good. You know, this is the way it was. This is the way it was. And so here they are. They are. They smell all the fried bread and everything that's going on. They don't even have money. They don't even have the flour to make bannock, you know, there. And so... All right. And so uh, so they go in and they're eating all the food. They're eating all the food and they're drinking. It's all this juice, all this good stuff. And they're changing the clothes, putting on these clothes and everything. Then they go in and hide it and everything. Verse nine, they became overnight millionaires, overnight millionaires, overnight millionaires. So the purpose. And they said to one another, we do not do well this day. Mm, we do not do well. You got to make good choices. You got to do the right thing when God blesses you, whether it is with $10 or $10 million. Because see, if you cannot be faithful with $10, how the hell are you gonna be faithful with $10 million? Stop, stop fooling yourself. Stop because you ain't fooling me or nobody else. You know, oh, if God, if God let me win the lottery, then I'm gonna really support me. No, you won't. Keep that lie to yourself. If you can't be faithful with $10, $100, and because it's, you're going to be the same broke minded, <laughs> poverty thinking, you know, stingy person that you are because money only makes you more of what you are. <laughs> it's not going to just change you to become this fabulous, you know, humanitarian and wanting to give. It's just going to show you more of what you are, you know. <laughs> You, if you used to drink like, uh, I don't even know the names of all the alcohol, some low-grade liquor, oh, you're just going to upgrade that to the highest grade. 
That's all, you know. <laughs> if you've eaten bad food already, you're gonna even eat worse food. You're gonna start getting caviar and all kinds of stuff, paying all that money for something that's gonna kill you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh, I think I want some filet mignon now, you know. <laughs> stuff ain't even cooked, and you're eating that raw stuff bleeding right on your plate and stuff, and you're taking that stuff right in your body and thinking that you are all this and two bags of chip because you can now go to the olive garden. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear what i'm saying <laughs> stuff you know killing yourself you know and not not even killing yourself softly but killing yourself faster <laughs> you know with all of that stuff because you did not learn the lessons down here and you got blessed with all of this and you don't know how to manage it and so you are doing all of this crazy stuff sometimes that people do to impress somebody they didn't even study you they don't even care about you <laughs> Maybe they want what they can get from you. That's about all. And so, but we go around doing all, get up from that. Don't die in that mess. Don't, don't. He says, so he says, we're not doing well. We're not doing well. So the purpose for this wealth transfer, if you will, because it's happening right now. It's happening right now. It's happening in consciousness. You have to change your mind. See, we, I think we thought when we was hearing this way back and stuff like that and preaching this, that all at once, you know, oh, there's going to be a truckload of money that's going to be dumped on us and stuff like that. No, it is happening right now. But, you know, it's, it is happening in consciousness as we set our intent and get our minds right and stuff. And as we get a plan and a purpose for our life. So what would be the purpose for, uh, for, $10 million, say, or $100 million or whatever, what would you do with that? You know, have you written out something that you would do with that? They say, oh, I think I'll just like, you know, go here, go there and eat here at there and just travel all over. Okay, that's okay if you want to do it. But the purpose for that is much bigger than for you. It is always for others. For God so loved the world that he gave his son for the whole world, okay? It is all, it's the law of circularity, circulation. That's how you keep it going. And people find themselves stagnant because they don't know how to release stuff from their hand. And the more you hold on, eventually the day will come that there won't be nothing there one way or the other because you did not practice the law of circularity of circulating what God had given you so that it could become more. And we're talking about harvest and stuff. You can't have harvest if you don't have a seed in the ground, have seeds in the ground. Okay, so now well, let me just hurry up and finish here. Let me see what time is it? God, I think I'm going a little bit, almost at the top of the hour. So just right on time here. And so he says, we're not doing this. So you have to check yourself so you won't wreck yourself. You know, check yourself so you won't wreck yourself. Make sure that you are a good steward and manager over what you have now. If you not, are not a good steward and manager over what you have now, you don't need to be going like, oh, God, give me this, give me that. I'm going to, no, no, no. You manage what you have now, whether it's two mites or whether it's two million mites, you know, you manage that properly, you know, according to the kingdom of God. And then that's going to make space for the more to come in because to whom much is given, much is required. More responsibility can be given to you because you have shown yourself faithful. Well done, you good and faithful servant. You know the story, the uh, uh, parable that Jesus said, you know, to the, the guys that had the talent, it was all about money. It wasn't about, oh, he can sing so well. <laughs> he can hit the highs. No, no, no. It was about money. It was the money. The, Jesus spoke about money much of the, the gospel, it was about money. Why? Because it was the gospel of the kingdom. Can I just go off a little bit here? Just, just a little bit. See, it was the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. The, head, the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. He was speaking to those people 2,000 years ago, but he was really speaking for our time here specifically. Why? How do you know that? The, the, he says, go and preach the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. You know, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God. That the kingdom of heaven, Uranus, 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 that's where the word comes from. And we know that Uranus is the ruling planet of Aquarius. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. So it was a clue for uh, the, the age of Aquarius that was to come to thousand years later. So all of these parables that Yeshua spoke to these people, it was there for them at a very low level, but it was really for us that would be living in the age of the gospel of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Uranus, the kingdom of Uranus or the kingdom of the age of Aquarius. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
is there, is there. Okay, so now it was about how to manage money. It was about dealing with finances because it's gonna be very, very important you know, for establishing and advancing the kingdom of God in the earth, not in the sky, not over in the Middle East, but the kingdom of God within you and wherever you are. That's what the kingdom of God is advancing. That's what the kingdom of God is coming to. Okay. Now, so he says this. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Let me just get off this and go on. So he says, we're not doing good here. This is a day of good tidings. So, you know, you got to tell, you got to share with people. People, you guys are here on this. I've been doing Rise of Mystics for four years now, right? And uh, some of you don't tell people about it. And some of the reasons why you don't tell people about it because you are afraid to tell them that you're going to be persecuted if you tell them what they say. We're not doing good. You're not doing good. You're not doing well. If you're coming here eating and eating and eating and you're not sharing it with anybody else, you're just becoming a spiritual glutton. Pause and think about it. You're becoming a spiritual glutton. You're becoming selfish. Because you're receiving all this. And if you're here, you must be receiving something. Otherwise, you shouldn't be here, right? So if you're here and you're receiving, you should be sharing what you are receiving with others, sharing with others, even inviting them, you know, but sharing with others, it is very important. Otherwise, you're not doing good. You're not doing, so you got to uh, do the right thing. Somebody shout, do the right thing. I think there was a movie called that. Do the right, you got to do the right thing, you know, and that's, and so he says, wait, we're, we're not doing the right thing here. This is a day of good tidings. This is a day of good tidings. I don't care what the news tell you and what the politicians tell you. This is a day of good news. This is a day of good news. This is a day of good news. It's not a day of, oh, the, the, the next variation, a variant of, of COVID or the next thing that they have already launched that they're going to make it known by early part of next year and stuff like that. You know, that's their world. That is, we are in the world, but we're not of that world. Uh, this is a day of good news. It's not a day of like, oh, in their system, recession is there, you know, and it is happening and the system is going to fall apart. But thank God that we are not a part of that. We are in the world and not of this world. And your resources comes from source. It comes from source, not the Fed, not this, not that, or whatever. Matter of fact, I'm going to even show you how to, I'm going to be giving some information here pretty soon, not uh, here, but to not show you how to get your house back because you're actually a tenant in your own house and you think you own the house. <laughs> but on your mortgage deed, it says that you're a tenant. <laughs> Is it my house? So that's why they can take it back. I right, go, 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 miss two or three like uh, no sun and stuff. They will start to foreclose on that place and let you know that you're only a tenant, you know, and a tenant. That's the word that was used for a slave. Ooh, so you're working for the banking system. You're working for all of that stuff. But there are ways around that. And that's part of the way that the wealth transfer is taking place. And we're going to be sharing this. Some of the stuff I shared back, back with you back in September, I told you I was going to be talking about things like this common law and things like this. And I uh, and the Lord just opened up something just recently where, you know, we would be able to do that, where I won't have to do just all of this other stuff. But I'm going to show you how you can get the information and uh, and take back what the enemy stole from you. Because, see, here they are there in the enemy's camp and, they, and overnight they became a millionaire. Do you realize that people are becoming millionaires overnight? That is really happening, you know, that it is really happening, not just by winning the lottery and stuff, you know, and but the favor of God and things are happening. There are things, there are legal things that can be done that can change your life immediately, immediately, just like literally like what? You know, I didn't even know about this. See, we don't know what we don't know, you know. <laughs> And so, but uh, we're going to be talking about these things. All right. So he says, uh, this is not good. This is a day of good tidings, a day of good tidings. Even if you've gotten a negative report from the doctor, it's a day of good tidings, it's a day of good news. What's the good news? By his stripes, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. And if a person decides to transition, that's okay. They can transition and stuff. It's still true that by his stripes, I'm healed. It doesn't lessen anything, okay? If you got a, a, a negative report, uh, excuse me, a credit report or whatever, you know, <laughs> you are the head and not the tail. You steal the head and not the tail. It doesn't matter what that report says or what uh, what the system out there says. That doesn't change that. All right. So now he says, uh, if we, um, he says, this is a good, this is a day of good tithing. And 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 hold, uh, this day is a day of good tithing and we hold our peace. Stop holding your peace, people. You need to shout it from the mountaintop. You need to tell people. Number one, about your spirituality and what you are doing, what you are experiencing. 
okay? And uh, you don't have to try to force anything, but share, sharing, sharing. That's what we used to do, like when I did street ministry. I started ministry on the streets. Actually, I started in high school, right? <laughs> and then I went to the streets and stuff, you know, and uh, just sharing. Shit. I, people everywhere I went got saved. Everywhere I went got saved. We lay hands on people right on the street, led them to Christ. People fall down on the street. People were healed on the streets. Then I went to the hospital. Then they chased me out of the hospital because people were literally getting up out of their beds, walking. I went to the emergency room and would go in there and tell people, I was what, 19 years old, I think, in human years. I would go in there and tell them about this Jesus that had healed me of epilepsy, which is incurable, and some other things and stuff. And I would just go in there filled with faith and the power of God, no doubt. And I would say, you know what? They, they're suffering in the waiting room, waiting in the emergency room, waiting to be seen and stuff like that, you know. I remember John Gaston Hospital. That's what it was called in Tennessee. Look it up. And uh, I remember I did this on two occasions. Went in there and began to tell them the good news that they were healed. And God is my witness. I lied not before God. I prayed over the people. Told them, okay, you can go home now. And people went like, okay. And they literally got up and walked out of the hospital. <laughs> Literally got up and walked out. The pains left, everything left. And it was like, you know, I broke that hypnotic spell of that illusion of the sickness, the disease, or the pain, or whatever that was going on. And they came to reality, back to reality, you know, and they realized that they did not have to experience that. And they literally got up and walked out of the hospitals. Oh, I could tell you many, many stories. These are true stories, no exaggerations and stuff. But what I'm telling you, that the good news, the good news, the good news would change lives if you believe what you are speaking. Sometimes it work when you don't even believe it yourself. I've seen that happen too. I pray for people and go, oh my God, oh my God, I don't know, Jesus. One little story here before I end. I was in this place called... Uh, it was in northern Manitoba, near uh, Ontario, one of these remote islands. And I had been speaking in the far north, in the Northwest Territories, and word had got around about there's this kid up here working miracles and prophesying all kinds of stuff. That's what they call me, right? You know, because I used to like use, uh, I'll tell you this, don't, don't tell nobody, okay? Because I looked so young, plus my hair was, was really short, right? At that time, I looked even younger. And I was skinny because I was fasting all the time. I didn't, I couldn't grow a mustache couldn't grow mustache. Couldn't. So they were calling me this kid and people didn't respect me. And all I wanted was R-E-S-P-E-C-T, you know, and I couldn't get. And so I came up with this idea. I'm going to get some mascara here. You had to sneak and do it right. And I would draw a little mustache on and, you know, and, <laughs> and people didn't know me. So I go to another community community and so that they would see this guy so they didn't call me like a little kid because they saw must because i just could not grow must i don't grow hair like you know you know and so and uh, it's, it's the native part and the native american part of me right and so and i just could, and so i would do that and they start changing the, the the way that they perceive me and started to accept me right so here i am in this community the only thing is like you know i would in those days i'd get so wound up preaching i'm running or jumping or whatever and i'm sweating and then i i use a, a a handkerchief wipe this side so i got a mustache on this side and this side probably don't have one and i'm <laughs> I am telling you the truth. I am telling you the truth. And so we went to this community. I can't remember the name of it right now. Oh, it was up there. And this chief had invited me because he had heard of all the things. And I flew into the community with uh, my interpreter because they spoke, I believe it was a Bush Cree up there, Bush Cree language. That was the, the language that they spoke. And uh, I could only sing in Cree a little, little bit. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I could, I could only, uh, I could only uh, uh, sing in the language like, and they like to hear me sing like the language, you know, and I was, just, I was getting really good, like, you know, and, uh, and so we land on this island, and I've, I've shared the story before, probably here, this is the truth, I get there with my interpreter, and we chartered a plane there, so I only had money to get there, only had money, so we chartered a plane, so there was about two planes of us there, you know, that's from people from further up north, and my interpreter and stuff, and so now I'm out of money, because the, 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 the chief had promised, okay, if you come, I'm gonna like, you know, charter a plane to get you out of here, okay, and so I'm there, and uh, we had to walk uh, to the, where the meeting was going to be at, which was going to be at the far end of an island, maybe, I don't know, a mile or so away, maybe more, I don't know how, how far it was, 
And so we're walking. And, you know, the thing is, when you're on a mission field like that, you don't have an itinerary. It's, it's like you're here, you're there, you're going wherever they're pulling you. OK, OK, it's not like, you know, the, uh, you know, the big major ministry, they have everything all written down. We're going to be here now. We're going to no. it is not like that. You know, <laughs> it's like, OK, we, somebody needs prayer here. Somebody. And so I was informed on my way to the major meeting. OK, at the uh, at the, the the band office there, there's the town hall, whatever it's called there. And uh, and that this guy wanted a, a short service in his house. And I didn't know why. OK, so I get there and I'm preaching. This is the truth. I'm preaching Mark two with my interpreter. The house is jam packed with people, hardly any move, room to move. Uh, preach about the God healed this man that could walk and made him walk. Right. And stuff. And there's people all outside the window, all around, you know, boats yet coming in because these are islands way up there. If you look on a map of Manitoba, a lot of islands and stuff. And so people like rows of people all around the houses, like in the Bible days. Right. And I'm preaching like, you know, and everything. And so at the end, like they say, well, the reason why we wanted you to come here is because this guy won't be able to come. And he's one of the elders. And he can't walk. And I'm going, oh, my God. And I just preached that Jesus could heal, make the man walk. And when they pull the man up from his chair, his leg was like parenthesis, like that. His legs was bowed out like that. But I think he had rheumatoid arthritis or something. His legs were like that. They went out like that. And the guy was probably about 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, I was probably weighing about 120 pounds if that at that time. And I looked up and I'm going like I really didn't know if God, I know God can do anything, but I know he was going to do that through me, right? You know, that's what I'm saying. Sometimes is your faith. Sometimes you may not even have faith, but if you step out in faith and here's all these people, they just heard me preach this about maybe 20 minute message of he could work miracles. They heard about all these other miracles in other places where all kinds of things took place. And so I get down, I kneel and I'm holding on to his ankle, to his, to his uh, knees, right? And I'm commanding this spirit to come out of his bones and stuff. And all at once, this is the truth. I hear a snap, crackling, popping like the Rice Krispies, right? You know, all in it, but it's loud. And this guy's leg that was like this, bent like that, they went just like that. And he jumped up so high. He was so tall, almost hit the low ceiling. And I thought the guy was going to fall over on me. And I'm like that. Everybody was surprised. I was even surprised. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is the truth. The point that I'm making is sometimes we are afraid to step out in faith and do what we've been called to do. What if something happened? You'd be thinking, well, what if it don't happen? What if it does happen? What if it does happen? It's God. It's the spirit that's working through you. It's not you. It is him that's working in you according to his good pleasure. So these guys say that, hey, what we're doing is not good. We, can, we can't keep this to ourselves. We got to go tell other people. We have got to go tell other people about this blessing, about this abundance that's come. And he said, because if we don't tell, he said, some evil thing is going to fall upon us. You know, if, if we just keep this to ourselves and don't share, something is going to come and take this blessing away. And so, you know, the rest of the story, they went to the king's house and they, they went to the porter first. They went to the portal, actually. And I can imagine they were saying, unclean, unclean. The porter comes out there. What's going on? The porter is the gatekeeper. How many other the gatekeepers need to hear this? The gatekeepers need to hear this. The gatekeepers, and I know some of you are gatekeepers here. You are intercessors and you are gatekeepers, you know, for the things of the spirit of God. You're watchers, watchmen, watch, watch women on the walls. You're gatekeepers and stuff. And so he went to the, they went to the gatekeepers and they told them. And then the gatekeepers went and announced at the king's house. And the king said, well, this is just probably not true and stuff like that. And uh, this is just probably a trick of the enemy. That's what the king said, like, you know, and uh, and so finally they went in to, to search out and they found out that the enemy had ran off and left all of their Louis Vuittons, their Gucci and their, their, uh, their, their Italian suits and shoes and, and all of the, the fine things. There was a whole trail of them because, and they left all their cars. They left all of their, <laughs> it's in your Bible, it says it. They left all their cars, their SUVs, their, their luxury cars and everything. It was all just there in the garages, just waiting for them. And all they had to do was go and just pick it up. Just go and pick it up. Right place, right time. Why sit here till we die? 
abundance and wealth is waiting for you now and in this coming year as Jupiter comes into Aries and light up the beginning of the year. See, Aries is the beginning of the Zodiac. <laughs> That's the beginning of things. So God is saying, there's a new beginning for you, new beginning for you. Jupiter, the great God, the largest ball of energy that is out there is coming at zero degrees, actually starting tomorrow and is lighting it up and changing things, giving you a new beginning. Why sit we here till we die? My last point before I stop here is this, that people you know, are moved by desperation or inspiration. I used to do this at my financial seminars and motivational speaks. And she said, people are moved by desperation or inspiration. Sometimes you have to get in a desperate position before you can get up from where you are. You have to get desperate rock bottom and then you start to change things and do something differently. It may not be what you want right now, but at least you're doing something and the universe sees that the Holy Spirit sees that and all at once the doors open and things begin to happen because you simply got up and did something different. People are moved by desperation or inspiration. The Holy Ghost can give you an inspiration, can give you a word and all at once your whole world change can give you an idea, business idea, something to create, something to do, something out of the blue. That's why it's so good to meditate, go within meditate, meditate, meditate. After you prayed and talked and spoke in tongues and edified yourself, then you go within and you listen. Meditation is God talking to you. And all at once an idea come. All the inventions, practically all of them that you see in the world, that's how it came. You know, Thomas Edison, after he had tried, what was it, 9,989 times and stuff, decided to lay there on that workbench. I think I read a work, lay on that workbench and just empty his mind. And when he emptied his mind, all at once a thought came to it you know, and he acted on that thought and things happen, you know, same thing with uh, most of the other inventions. You get to that point where inspiration comes and stuff, although we know that he stole some technology and other things from, you know, Tesla and things like that, but the inspiration will come. The inspiration, what is inspiration? That is God's breath, God inspire, in spirit, inspiration, God's breathing on your mind, breathing on your brain cells and activating neurons and things that, whoa, I'm thinking outside my box that I had created. I'm thinking outside my box that my family or, or friends or loved ones or or a husband or wife created for me. You think outside that and something began to happen. My last point here is God used unclean people for wealth transfer. Ooh, did you hear what I've said? These were unclean people. These were people with leprosy. They were, con they were deemed unclean. And those were the ones that God used for the wealth transfer. I am looking for unclean people. I, I, God sends some unclean people because uh, unclean people in this next year is going to be your point of contact, our, my point of contact, hopefully yours too, to, to bring you into the next level. I mean, they may not look like you. They may not believe like you. They may not even, I don't know, they, they, they may even be gender fluid. I don't care what kind of fluid they are. <laughs> if you can cause stuff to flow my way, come on, bring it on, girl. You know, <laughs> if you got an idea that's going to help me, I don't care what you look like on the outside, inside, what's been chopped off, add on, or whatever, you know. But if you got a word that's going to change something for me, I don't care what your politics is. I don't do politics anyway. I don't care what your religion is or anything like that. But just if, if you got something, if you are one of these lepers that, that said, hey, I got an idea that can help your business to grow, you know, and I'm not going to be one of those rel religious people says, oh, no, you know, I can't listen to your idea because you married to somebody else or you married to somebody that's, that's got the same thing you got between your legs too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear what I'm saying? Can you hear what, do you smell what the rock is cooking tonight? Do you smell, uh, I'm telling you that, that you got to, and I don't think many of you are because I believe you guys got better sense, but maybe for those that are listening in the future and stuff, you know, 
You can't judge by outward appearance. You can't dictate how God is going to bless you because you might miss that blessing. I'm sure that no one in Israel, no one in Israel knew that their blessing was going to come from unclean people, people with, with limbs falling off, people with sores all on them. I don't know. They got AIDS or whatever. I don't care what they got. You know, if they got a word, you got to, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit has to say to the church. If God want to speak through a jackass, a kid or, or old person, young person, black, white, brown, whatever, or whatever type of thing that they want to call themselves, them, they, there, whoever, you know, let him hear, let him hear. If it's going to be something that spirit is moving in, and I'm not talking about some crazy stuff and, and uh, uh, changing lifestyles or nothing like that either. You know what I'm talking about. Something that's going to get you to your next level. So my point is, don't put God in a box of how things will come and how things will manifest for you to get you to your next level of, of blessings, prosperity, abundance. It could even be a crook. It could be somebody with some coke under their nose. Oh, here, here's, here's a napkin. I'll give you a napkin here wipe that off your face bro you know and you know get your head straight let me get you some water to drink throw some water on your face okay now you tell me clearly how to get you know all right i don't care you know they, they could be smelling like marijuana i hate to smell that stuff you know i'll just hold my nose <laughs> okay well that's right thank you sister i thank you i just totally receive it you know <laughs> whatever it is that's the point here that is being made unclean unclean people that we would deem unclean and the most unusual unexpected people i prophesied to you that you're going to see things happen uh, in your life and things that's going to come before you in this coming year that's going to change your world. There's going to be people, I believe, on this platform that will step into millionaire status 2023. 2023. I believe that. I believe that. I believe it. I believe that that some of you that have that zero status all at once, you're going to have like five figure, then six figure then, you know, or whatever is going to go, it's going to grow. It's going to, because uh, if you aligned yourself with spirit and what God is doing, and if you can hear just as they went to the porters or the gatekeepers, and then they went to the King's house and they saw that it was there and you see it. And if you can see it, if you can see it, you can have it. You can have it in the name of Yeshua. So why sit we here till we die? Why sit we here till we die? Don't sit in doubt. Don't sit in negativity. Don't sit in fear. Don't sit in depression. Don't sit in fear of, of what used to be and all of the other stuff, but rise up and move forward. God started to move things and things start to work when momentum started, when they started moving. All right. So Father, I just thank you for your Holy Spirit tonight. I thank you for all your people on this platform here tonight. I thank you for this word that was spoken to your people is the word of the Lord uh, for this hour for us. And I receive it. And I thank you, God, that has been deposited within every life that is here in the name of Yeshua. And those that are listening later will hear this word and this word will germinate within their spirit and it will produce fruit 36 and 100 fold according to your word. And I bind up everything that was seek to steal this word away, every vulture, every foul, every demonic force, or everything that would seek to do that. I come against anything that would seek to cause it to be uprooted. But let my words, which is your word, resound within the minds and the consciousness of your people, even in their sleep throughout this year, when they find themselves in a tight spot, when they find themselves being tested for what they're believing, let the word of the Lord God uh, sound resound louder within their consciousness to know that if they keep moving forward, that things will happen in the mighty name of Yeshua. And it's so, and it can't be otherwise. It can't be otherwise. Anybody agree with that tonight? I'm going to open your mics, your mics here. And I want, if you agree, I want you to shout that you agree or say amen or something. If you agree with that prayer and that prophetic word tonight, if you, let me see if I can get you the, here we go. Sorry. Open your mics if you can. I agree. I agree. I and I agree. 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 I
Amen. Hallelujah. Information is in the chat for those of you that would desire to sow a seed, give, and to this ministry, you can do that. But we just praise God and we thank you for just being here tonight. It is already past the top of the hour, but I'm going to ask the women of God if they, uh, of Dr. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Dorothy or uh, Prophet Sharon have anything to say or if God is moving in that way, we know that we've given you the word, the prophetic word already, but if there's something specific that uh, somebody uh, is feeling uh, to say, use the icon to raise your hand quickly and we will get to you. Can you guys hear what I'm saying? If there is nothing, that's okay. Because I believe that the word, the word of the Lord, this word is um, solid, is found, is true, and it's a more sure word of prophecy. So with the, I see Dr. Uh, okay, where did that go? Okay, did I see? I thought I saw Dr. Uh, Pastor Dorothy's hand go up. If you did, put your hand up again so I can see it, and it helped me from, oops, it keeps going up and down. I don't know why. Let me just try to find you here. Okay, there we go. Okay, Pastor Dorothy, you can unmute yourself. Uh, good evening, uh, Mystics. That's um, I was just listening to the word tonight, and yesterday I was uh, talking from preaching from Ezekiel thirty-seven, where it says, "Prophesy to the dry bones." Yeah, and it was saying, "Speak to the dry bones in your life. What's going on in your life? And if mm. you were in a good place this year, you should be in a better place next year." And if you were not in a good place this year, you should still be in a better place next year. So God is speaking uh, really what uh, Prophet John was speaking uh, tonight. Why stay here and die? Let's move on because God is saying move into bigger and better things. So speak to those dry bones, speak to the place that you're in and watch God move because Amen. God is on the move. He's saying come up higher, come up higher, come up higher every day now and so if uh you are listening tonight it is come up higher it's your season it's your time to yes. prophesy you've had us prophesy over you we mm -hmm. prophesy prophesy now it's time for you to prophesy to your situation yes. and watch god move god said this is the year that every uh kingdom member everyone that's in the kingdom should prophesy yes amen i agree I agree, I agree, I agree. Thank you for that word, mighty woman of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I see uh, Dr. Sharonda Stewart. Your hand was up, I believe. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Prophets, hello. This is my first time on the line and I am so excited. You came from one of my favorite scriptures why sit he why sit here and die and that's what i've been really ministering to the um leadership that god has entrusted me with why sit here and die he has hit our finances he has hit our families yeah. but i said it's time to wake up and yeah. take your place mm -hmm. in the ascended place where god has placed you and looking at it from a negative, I said, look at how power is actually um, in the scientific realm. You need, a, you need a negative and a positive to bring forth power. But mm -hmm. we always look at the negative and in the spirit, God is saying, look up higher so that the positive can connect to the negative so yeah. that his anointing, his power can override any situation. So once we look at this, like, I'm here, I'm here. But once you take your place of authority in the ascended place, not in the resurrected place, but in the ascended place, yeah. God will show you the power and the anointing that resides within you so that you can overtake uh -huh. that place of authority where you supposed to move into that place of authority where you are supposed to take that place of authority where your finances would be a magnet to you. The money will come to you. Yeah. You understand who you are. Rise up, raise up your energy so that whatever anointing, whatever energy you're drawing 
the anointing is going to come to you. Yes. So I look at our negative is not a negative. Mm -hmm. See it in the negative so the positive can come so the power can oversee that situation. Then people can see the light and they can see the Christ in you. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I, I really got. And it, it is and it's time for us to see that. That's right. It is. It is. Praise God. We really just appreciate you sharing that. And we know that is true. And God is going to be doing some awesome things in this uh, new year for you. And that's just confirmation out of the mouth of his people here and stuff. And as you were speaking, you know, I really just felt the anointing of God upon your life and the power of God that's there. Uh -huh. Also, I know that he's going to be doing some just spectacular things in this new year for you. Wow. And, um, there's there's travel also. I don't know if you uh, uh, travel uh, with your, uh, I think you said the leaders that you're training or something like that. I don't know if you travel, but I see you traveling. I see a lot of travel coming up in this coming year for you. Hang on. Let me just pull this this way and pull out your, uh, God, let me try to put this. I'm sorry about that. Okay. I'm working with this thing here. Yeah. I see a lot of uh, travel coming up for you in this uh, coming year and just uh, a lot of things just changing. Uh, for you. I see you building. Now, this is going to be a little bit interesting. I, I, I don't know exactly what this means and stuff like that, but uh, I'm seeing a school. I'm seeing a school uh, mm -hmm. in development. So does that mean something to you? Okay, great, great. So I, I see this and I see God is going to really just use this powerfully, but I'm seeing that, uh, and I don't know if this is happening yet, but uh, what will happen if it is not manifesting yet, that your voice, your voice is what I'm hearing and stuff, because I'm hearing it's not only just your preaching voice and stuff like that, but but your voice is going to just be resonating in such a way that throughout uh, uh, where you're at, but also across the country, but I see your voice going over overseas i see your voice going over yes. different nations and stuff you know mm. and uh, i see things opening for you and i'm going to just call out a few places that i am seeing i'm seeing there's going to be a connection i'm seeing a connection with people like in the uk area okay I'm, there's going to be a wow. connection with that uh, i'm seeing a connection uh toward west africa area okay and so i'm seeing a connection with that and i'm seeing um that uh, not just in ministry as in teaching or preaching or whatever you do, I'm seeing just a really strong, uh, uh, I'm seeing a strong apostolic teaching uh, call upon your life as well as, you know, the prophetic that's there. And I don't know if you sing now or you sing a lot, but I'm hearing your voice. I'm hearing your voice, not just only in preaching, but I'm hearing songs, like even, even like some of the Lord coming forth. And he says that your voice is going to resonate. Uh, wow. uh, the land and people will hear it and people will know it because God has given you a specific uh, uh, sound. He's given you a specific uh, a frequency that's going to reach people and uh, and people will like. It's, it sounds really strange. People are going to say, I, "I know that voice. It's that voice that that." <laughs> I mean that that brought me and uh it's going to resonate with people in a very powerful way and so the lord would say to you that in this coming year it's going to be very uh great it's going to be wonderful and uh to just expect it and it's going to be some surprising surprising uh mm -hmm. doors and opportunities that open for you okay uh wow. in the ministry and in, in, in expansion and things and i hear the lord saying also don't worry about like well where's the money's going to come from where is the finance going to come from and uh, i see a business. I see the word business, at least. Uh, I don't see exactly what it is, but I see God blessing that and increasing it. And uh, so he says that whatever you put your hands to do in this year and what maybe have uh, uh, seemed to be uh, lacking or waning, okay, over the years, you're going to see a pickup in things. And so it's not only just in the area of ministry, but there is uh, going to be business that's going to take place. It's actually going to be at least two uh, types of businesses that's going to come in your direction if you're not already like uh, in Bible one, but there's going to be, and that's going to be uh, very powerful. It's going to uh, uh, really generate a lot of uh, like, uh, of just, just income and things coming in. And um, okay, let me see here. I don't know why I'm seeing banners and stuff. I'm seeing banners and different things just come before me and just banners and wow. other things like that. Does that mean anything? <laughs> it means a lot. Well, I'm the apostle over SNS Ministries. 
I oversee over 50 to 100 churches in Ghana. Africa. What? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Wait a minute. Say slowly. You're, you're the apostle over what? SNS Ministries, which means spirit to spirit, his spirit to our spirit ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, I oversee um, in the United States. I, oh, we're in this DC. I'm in the DC area. Okay. I, oh, I oversee five ministries in the DC area, but I have ministries in Kansas and in California. Hmm. And that just opened up. Hmm. But in Africa this year, they invited me over. The apostle has over 100 churches. And I said, look, it's just little old me. Oh and we're God. just starting over again. But that's that we, West Africa connection. That yeah. West Africa connection, that, that's going to be powerful. That's going to be really, really powerful because I see you really growing there. And I see you planting there. I see you training, teaching. I see... Um, I see other things besides churches like coming forth there. I see uh, places, uh, uh, for lack of better expression, my we are, we are setting up our city of refuge over there, which That's has, right. we okay. um, have our school. We yeah. have not only a ministry school, um, I'm the dean over at the University College Seminary. So we're taking mm -hmm. that school over there. Mm -hmm. And the city of refuge is just gonna, is we, we are, um, getting engineers so that we got over 600 acres of land Ooh, that stands. Stop, 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 stop. I want to tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but I'm thankful for that because I saw land, I saw buildings uh, being built, but these were not just churches that were being built. And you said like City Refuge, I see places, I see like distribution centers and stuff. And when I start to see all this stuff, I'm going, okay, okay. Like, you know, cause sometimes I kind of like back, you know, and you know, cause we don't you know, we don't know. We, we look after the, the flesh and natural and but God has big 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 dreams for you and plans for you and things are going to fall in place and stuff and this is your season this is your time for that and I do see the land I see uh stuff just a lot of things that's being donated and uh just a lot of favor that's going to come you know uh from both sides this side of the ocean and that side of the ocean also but wow. I also something big is going to happen in the UK. There's going to be some type of connection that's going to be uh, very big. That's going to put you on a larger stage, if you will, you know, uh, uh, you wow. know, okay. can't tell you when this is going to happen, but that keeps coming up uh, in my spirit. And so, uh, and so the Lord would just say to you just to, you know, he's giving you this as a confirmation for you to just move with speed with it and not looking at yourself or what you have or don't have uh, to do this. Because as I said, there's going to be some type of business that's going to be apart from ministry, but will work as ministry that's going to be working with this, that's going to support this. And this is going to, and uh, it's going to like take off. One of the things is going to be in the area of technology, because I'm hearing technology now. One of the things will be in the area of technology and it's going to take off really fast. And, uh, and it's going to just be a blessing. It's going to just grow really, really fast. Now, uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I, okay. So, um, is your, is your husband in ministry with you or, or is, uh, you don't have to he's say. Not, he's not in, he's not in, um, no, he's not. He's, he's just, he's, he's a great supporter. Okay. That's right. Okay. Right, right, right. And so the, it is from that end, the, what type of business is he or involved with or what does he uh, I'm Where sorry. he's in, he's in government, but what God has opened up with, mm -hmm. I, I'm just in on what he did. He put me in finances. I help people out in finances. I do taxes. I take people from owing over hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of taxes and, and bringing them to zero. So he just, he just blessed me with that ministry. That is and it. I, and, and do you do this as a business or? or I, I do it or, as a business. No. Okay, he great, just great. Opened, It just took off in the last past three years and it's just <laughs> increasing. And I'm like, God. So people have um, come alongside and said, okay, you do the taxes part. We are helping out millionaires. God is just open the door for millionaires. We too. got to talk. <laughs> we got to talk. <laughs> and, but, but something is coming from his side. There, there's a business that is going to be developed from his side. That's why I was asking. I could see that he was a support, you know, for, uh, for what you were doing. 
And but there is something more that's going to come from his side of business that's going to be developed and stuff, you know, and that's going to really also take off because I saw two uh, that's going to be just uh, working really well and stuff. And, and it may have something to do with technology or something because I heard the word technology uh, there also. And but that is just amazing. And uh, praise God. So we never talked. And this is, is this your first time here? This is my first time here, my my dear friend I just met, <laughs> Tony McCullough Anthony oh. McCullough. He said, you got to get on the line. You will feel so at home because, I mean, I just, if I sat, sat and told everybody where I came from, what I did, but this is something that I call him daddy. Daddy has truly, just truly raised me. And I'm just coming back out. <laughs> Amen. It's a great um, time to come out. It's a great time. And you're just going to make big steps, just big steps. And, uh, you know, just be like these uh, uh, lepers. You know, you're not going to sit, just go, just, just keep moving. And as you keep that momentum going, you're going to see the blessings of God and things are going to just open up for you. And uh, God is going to give you a mighty boldness and a wisdom and, a, and just a, really just a favor. Like and I keep hearing about, do you sing at all? Or you, do you know that you can sing? No, I, no. Okay, that's okay, that's okay. I just, I, I, I mean, being a seer, I mean, my voice goes. Um, okay. Uh, is what, what the Lord is truly leading me to is to really start a broadcast on getting a, broadca okay. a podcast going. Okay. So that I can bring forth the people that I know all over the world. Um because where I'm met is is it's just totally kingdom teaching. So is mm. I'm just sensing that real strong in my spirit with the podcast coming through. I believe that that could be it because I hear your voice. It's going to be your voice and something about the frequency of your voice. It's going to really resonate with a lot of people. And you're going to hear people even saying that, you know, that your voice was soothing your voice really just touch them, you know, the message also, but it is, there's going to be something that God is doing with your voice that you're going to hear again and again over the years that people wow. say, you know, uh, about this. So praise God. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. I see that uh, Prophetess Dorothy also, I believe, is getting a word or it's got a word. You can unmute yourself, Prophetess Dorothy, if you don't mind. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Prophet. I just agree with all of the things you were saying. I had had my hand up and I didn't know that you were going to prophesy over Dr. Stewart because I saw her being a, a, a water walker is what oh. I had what I had seen and that she is God is going to take you to another place in the prophetic is where you are going to update the prophet's dictionary God says that he's going to give you uh, some words I, I'm hearing saying words acronyms and all of that and he's saying he's going to give you something new to add to that uh, prophet's uh, dictionary he says that those that have doubted that you are a prophet because you're just not a prophet is that but that you've been called to the office of mm. the of the prophet and people that have a, a doubted that are going to know by the accuracy of the words that you will be able that you're going to give is he says pay attention to your dreams because he's going to give you a lot more um, strategy and a lot more directions um, in your dreams uh, when you sleep. And he says, there's been those that have uh, wronged you or taken from you and tried to hold you back. And you have said, just forget it. But God is saying that he's not saying to uh, forget it because he wants them to apologize publicly because that is going to uh, strengthen your ministry and bring you to a place that they uh, really uh, stood in the way of you going, I would say like about five years ago, it's been like three to five years ago. And he's saying that some people who could have boosted you and have um, moved, helped you move up, refused to. And he says that you're in, and you don't hold a grudge and you say, just forget about it, forget about those people, what mm -hmm. they took, uh, let them have it. But God said that is not his heart for you in this season. His heart is to uh, put you on, he says, public display. He, mm -hmm. You are one that he wants to show off. Wow. And so this is your 
your season. This is your year in 2023 that God is showing you off. That's why you're, it's not going to be hard for you. You're not going to have to strive a lot. And God is going to send those alongside you that are going to uh, strengthen your ministry, that people that uh, you can trust, that you can impart things to. It's that because you have a lot now that's on your plate that if you would let go of, you could do a lot of other things in those ministries um, overseas in those ministries that he's, he's given you. And so he's sending you help in this season. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I received that. I received that. Well, I walk in the office of a seer, a prophet. Mm -hmm. I walk in that office. So with the apostleship and the um, prophet, that's one of, that's one of the highest ones. And um, I'm just, I mean, with me just, really getting back. When I say I'm getting back, y'all would never believe where I came from. I had two strokes. Mm -hmm. I couldn't talk. I couldn't walk. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is God. Yeah. And yeah. with me coming back out um, with the visions, with the Lord teaching me how to talk all over again, he, I, I, it, when I, it, it's just a miracle. Amen. But God has not only opened up Africa, he, West Africa, he opened up South Cap, Africa, Cape Town, and Dubai. He opened up Jerusalem. He opened up mm -hmm. Turkey, um, Spain, Australia, and Canada. Go so we'll be going to those countries next year also. I saw you traveling quite a bit next year. <laughs> I, I see you traveling quite a bit next year. Awesome. So I've received that. So the pro look, the prophets are waiting because with the revelation that I've been given is is it's just out there. And I believe this is the time for the body of Christ to embrace what I say source is doing, what he's doing, and 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 really showing them bringing the prophet level. He's he's shaking off the church that's yeah. in the yeah. prophets so that the totalness of his life and it's going to be a, a, a different is 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 it's going to shock him but some people been waiting on it just mm -hmm. to um clarify with um with doc, with prophetess um dorothy i'm a i'm a visionaire that's all i see i see visions and pictures mm -hmm. and that's how i teach and when i be teaching Daddy just gives me a display and I just show it to people. And that's how people can go from one level to another. So when I, when he start downloading, I show him pictures. And when the pictures come forth, they can see themselves in that picture, like through the tabernacle, the cross and all that. Mm -hmm. And taking out there what people call Buddhist teaching, Hinduism, all that. Is, is bringing people back to a deeper relationship in him through meditation and how to breathe yes. and how to do all of that and to show them how to speak the I am within them, to show them that I am that I am. So it's, it's just taking the prophets to a total different dimension and where I'm going at with the five, the 3D and, the, and to show the prophets how to move from you know, what Jesus Christ, what the Old Testament left us with is in 5D, but why is the church still in 3D? Mm -hmm. So this is not my platform, so I'm just going to be quiet. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. That is awesome. Can I ask you one more question about, um, is your father uh, living? Your yes. biological father. Yes. Okay. Because I see that um, your father is very proud of you. I don't see much talking, uh, much of a voice, but I see that he is uh, very proud of you and very proud of the stance uh, that you are taking. And God is saying that he is going to enhance that uh, relationship. It's, it's gonna go stronger in the, in the next few years. He's not gonna leave here without you knowing and uh, how he feels and rectifying some things in the relationship. I hear you. Okay. All right, let's go. I hear you, okay. Thank you, Prophetess Dorothy, Pastor Dorothy. I see Tony, your hand is up. You can unmute yourself. 
Oh my God, Prophet, I just wanted to say real quick, uh, I just wanted to confirm as you began, uh, this is the young lady, this great woman of God, as you know, we had the um, ordination service over the weekend and, uh, you know, I was, I was ordained and she conducted the, uh, you know, proclamations, the prophetic proclamations. Oh, and she was God. so powerful the very next day, which was yesterday, that was Saturday, the very next day, which was yesterday, we were on the phone for about an hour, powerful conversation. And she shared so much with me and profit. Everything you just mentioned was on point. I'm talking about every syllable accurate. I was just, I'm just blown away right now. I mean, you know, I know you as a true prophet and, you know, uh, um, uh, Apostle Sharonda, I've heard this man uh, prophesy earthquakes in regions where they don't have earthquakes <laughs> and it came to pass. But tonight, wow. the word he just delivered to you was every single thing that you mentioned to me in our conversation yesterday, including when yeah. he said West Africa. And then when he mentioned about your voice, uh, Prophet John, I just want to say real quick, and I'm going to take <laughs> five more seconds. She came under, she was a student under uh, the late uh, Turnell Nelson, who had a very distinguished voice himself, but he commented, she shared with me about her having a distinguished voice. And here you go tonight mentioning about the frequency <laughs> of her voice. And my oh, God, my God. And then real quick, a uh, 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 woman of God, um, um, uh, Pastor Dorothy, everything that you just mentioned to her as well, on point. I'm talking about on point. Uh, amazing accuracy. Uh, but the thing you just mentioned about her dad, I, I, I had a chance to meet her mom at the service over the weekend. And mm -hmm. her mom uh, not only supports her, but goes everywhere she goes. And I actually walked her to her car and we had just a, a, a short conversation after service on Saturday. And uh, she was just one of the most proudest moms I've ever talked to. And so when you said that about her dad, you know, I kind of put her, her mom in that position as well. But uh, just wanted to confirm that the word that you guys just delivered is just pinpoint accurate and just I'm amazed. I just wanted to mention that I'm and encourage too. the mystics. <laughs> I, I just I just thank thank you, uh, uh, Tony, for coming out like that and, and share that because that's important. Like you know, and this platform we do a lot of prophecy stuff and things like that, and people are hearing and then pe people hear the recording. Hundreds of people around the world, and it makes it even more just powerful when somebody comes out and just confirm that this is like you know the yes. truth or whatever that we're not just you know so i really appreciate that and thank yes, you indeed. and congratulations on your uh ordination thank if you very you much uh, so <laughs> what'd you say sister uh darn. i said he's a apostle nick <laughs> All right. amen well we got to start hearing from him soon again well you know i'm not i'm not into titles and that all that stuff much but uh praise god amen <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, that is awesome. Awesome. Well, we're just so happy for you and we just celebrate you and uh, thank you for uh, coming. And the Lord had a plan for you to speak. I saw you earlier and the spirit kept telling me, okay, to say something to her, say something to her. So it's okay, God, you know, we'll see. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> with, glad. With, thank glad. you. Thank you. It is, it is um, hard for a lot of people to prophesy to me. <laughs> Because they don't know what to expect, and but but once you know spirit, spirit yeah. knows what to say. Amen. Thank you so much. Bless you. So we look forward to uh, having more contact with you, and Tony will give you my uh, information because I need to talk to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So this has been just amazing. Why sit here till we die? Amen. Uh, awesome things and we thank you all for just being so uh, patient here tonight uh, for this session and uh, we'll have uh, our prayers on Thursday and after that our next meeting will be uh, January the 2nd I believe it is and so we'll give you guys a chance to kind of like relax and and uh, just uh, chill or whatever and digest all that you've been receiving put into practice another thing that that uh, brother Tony she said that he told her, see, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you know, you have to tell people, see, had he not told her to come tonight and to be a part of this, that word that was released tonight would not have gotten to her. And I don't know if you realize the importance of the prophetic word, but the prophetic word, it creates, it, 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 it launches forward, it, it confirms and stuff. And when God put his seal of approval on it, especially through people that don't know her from Eve, you know, and, and just call out specific 
things that the spirit called out, you know, you know that it's God and it's going to be more of an encouragement to her. And uh, she can use that word, that prophetic word that was given to her tonight as a weapon. When the enemy comes to try to say, no, 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 you can't do this or that, or whatever, you know, and so, uh, amen, that's powerful. And so another reason why your voice is going to be so uh, pronounced and everything and is because of what you went through with the strokes and stuff and couldn't speak. And so uh, everything has been readjusted. The frequency, the pitch and everything has been readjusted. And it's going to be that unique like your mentor was I said okay all right but bless you bless you bless you guys i'm going to give you uh something to go out on we'll see you thursday those of you that can and uh, we thank you for being here we love you all and appreciate you all your pastors that are out here bishops and apostles and prophets and teachers and uh uh mystics and um wizards and <laughs> and everything that's we got them all here you know and uh, rabbis and everything we just appreciate you and we uh love you okay i'm gonna give you some music to go out on just in case you want some okay and we'll see you thursday